Hey, come over here. You looking for a party? I got the spot. One and a half mile Coliseum. Everyone's there. High rollers, headliners, troublemakers. You can't forget the icons. History, Sin City, the lights, glamour, spectacle. Woo! Guest list? You, an 80,000. Take a seat. Face bumping, ground shaking, bottles popping, all the smoke. You want speed? We got speed. Full throttle, full service, no luck, all skill, best in the game. So what package do you want? Hometown kid? Man of the moment? The champ? That's 12. Nail biter. Who's it gonna be? Closers. No room for posers. Winners get their own lane. Cue the confetti. Party in Vegas starts right now on Fox. We welcome you live to Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Third race of the season. The weather here sunny in the 60s. Really outstanding. A little bit windy. Not as bad as yesterday. It's a great day to race and a great place to follow. One of the most exciting races in the history of NASCAR. The buzz from that photo finish in Atlanta continuing as we welcome you to the NASCAR on Fox pre-race show and race day. Counting it down to the start of the race over the mile and a half. Our guys are here. It's Clint Boyer, Kevin Harvick. I'm Chris Myers. Thanks for being with us. An abbreviated edition with the college hoops exciting and running a little bit long. People are excited about the race. It's still the afterglow of that Daniel Suarez photo finish, right? Three one thousandths of a second. He was a 40 to one long shot and he pulled it off. And people are still talking about that today. If that race last weekend in Atlanta didn't have something for you, I just I can't help you. <laughs> that thing from the word go, Kevin, I mean, we look up and they're wrecking already getting in one on lap one. And boy, they didn't look back that three one finish I will it's something that I will never forget standing in that booth and watching that go down well I watched that's for sure I let, I let <laughs> you him, called and Mike, it. him and Mike were, were calling a great uh, I great mean finish. fanned out up there I, I, I fanned out on him so I, I when you go back and you look at that finish and you look at that three wide and, and you go through the week and you hear all the chatter and the talk and everything that went with that finish what a great day for our sport. Now we're here in Las Vegas, completely different style of racetrack. Everything, everything that we're going to do today is, is drastically different in the, in the thought process. Now we might have five wide, but yeah. Um, you never, you never know. Five, how it's you're going to call a five wide. Five no. wide. I'm, okay. talking, I'm going to need some help I'm, if it's five I'm, wide. I'm, I'm talking. You're going to need to find I'm some words. I'm talking about on the restart. <laughs> okay, that's, that's about it. All right. Well, Joey Logano is back on the pole. He's been on the front row at all three races. Hasn't gone well for him. Looking for his first one of the year. Chase Elliott. Same thing. And we'll continue live from Las Vegas Motor Speedway. What a great start to the season. Two outstanding finishes. Rex early. Lots of passing and a lot more ahead. NASCAR on Fox counting it out of the start of the race in Las Vegas. That's Allegiant Stadium. They played the Super Bowl there. They had a rugby event there over the weekend that the fans went crazy over. Of course, Max Crosby of the Raiders, the Las Vegas Raiders, played there. And when we were in town, he pulled up a chair to chat with us. Number checker. Here they come to the flag. Last week's race in Atlanta saw one of the closest calls in NASCAR history. Photo finish! Daniel Suarez pulls off the win. And now, the series is in my city. A city where we've had a few close calls of our own. The year was 2010. Anthony Michael Carlo, better known as the Biker Bandit, made it off with $1.5 million in chips from the Bellagio. He rode off into the sunset on his motorcycle, until he bragged about it later, selling himself out. Stay humble, kids. <laughs> Before that, in 1991, Stardust Hotel was taken down by an inside job. Royal Harper, the security guard at the hotel, and his two sons attacked an armed truck driver and used smoke bombs to conceal their escape. They made it off with 1.1 million. You say the driver sped away afterwards. NASCAR fans, this last one's for you. A man walked into a sports book with $13 and a dream, and he walked out with just under $1 million. As Cody Ware, BJ McLeod, Landon Castle, and David Reagan found themselves in the top 10 at Daytona, the biggest heist in NASCAR betting history. Will we see another heist today? Another close call? I put money on it. Our thanks to Eight Lounge at Resorts World, Las Vegas. And there's the car of Daniel Suarez, a 
40 to one long shot last week three drivers at the end 400 miles separated by just inches in one of the most dramatic finishes ever what if you got the three together to talk about how that ended well we did that here they come to the flag three abreast photo finish Suarez. <laughs> Top three cars finished within seven thousandths of a second. Send it in to turn number one. That's the battle cry. The bottom of the racetrack belongs to Daniel Suarez getting some help from Kyle Busch. The outside lane got that run down the back like they always do. It got Suarez to the lead and then it was kind of like, okay, who's who and what's behind me? Yeah, at that point, I'm, I'm looking to my rear mirror more than what I'm looking ahead. Nice how he, he, he got out of shape. Oh, such a huge save by Bush. I wouldn't say that it was that big of a deal to me as, uh, as maybe as it seemed on TV. That was very, very important that he didn't wreck because if he was wrecking, I don't feel like I was gonna have a shot anymore. And I was able to block the, the 19. She was very tight, but I had to do that. And then I looked back and, and there was a two. I said, well, the two is pretty fast. The two car wasn't in the gas, didn't want to push a Chevy to the wind. I don't blame him, you know, he, he didn't want to give me the push to pass his teammate. I was gonna have to do something else. One lap to go. I knew coming off of two, Blaney's there, and it's like, <clears throat> I knew he was gonna block, but I didn't know how bad. Like if I blocked the middle or tried to make a late block on the eight, I feel like the, the percentage of getting wrecked was pretty high. Does he block high, does he yeah. block low? Here it comes, Kyle Busch to the middle. I kind of went up a little bit, he went up a little bit, and then I went left, and he shook left, and then I stayed straight, and then he shook left again. I was like, okay, well, he, he blocked twice to the left, so I had to take middle and pray to God that I had enough room. Three wide, the last lap, I want to be on the outside. All Look at this. Four. Here they come to the flag. Three abreast, photo finish. When we crossed the start finish line, I was like, well, damn, I think I held on. It's mine, like I won. And I knew I got the eight. I was focused on the 12 and how much room I had to him. And I couldn't see the 99, so I'm like, eh, I might have got the 99. And I can see how I'm inching away from the, from the eight going ahead, but the 12, I have no idea. I don't know. Under review here. Oh, it's really freaking close. There is the 99. Yeah, guys. Yeah. It's probably one of the most intense races uh, I've been part of. Absolutely bothers me to be the worst of the three. The Bush brothers are actually three of the top five closest finishes of NASCAR, and not one time have we come out on top. So, quite used to that. I couldn't be too upset with it. Like, I've, I've won probably more than I should have by a couple feet. Uh, I can't complain too much about losing one by a few inches, right? Daniel Suarez, how about Jamigo? It won't be the last time that, that we're gonna be on big training with, with a 919. <laughs> uh, just an incredible uh, moment still talking about it. And now we're in Vegas where, you know, we're used to those kind of finishes. They've had some dramatic finishes, maybe not that close, but certainly last second finishes. When I when I think of you two and I think of great finishes that were that close, what about 2011 Talladega? Jimmy Johnson wins, but Quinn, I think he, oh my you gosh. were pushing him. We had this thing won, Kevin, by the way, and then all of a sudden you decided not to push me anymore. Watch, watch the car behind Edwards. the 33. Yeah. You see, Kevin Harvick came off my bumper. We lost it, but wasn't it like .003 on that one? I can only, yeah. do, I can only do so much for you. That could have been a we win, Kevin. It could have been a we win, but it I do been agree. A, it Carl ruined been a our you, story. You, and then yeah. Jimmy Johnson, we handed him yet another win. But yeah. when you're when you're in those positions, it's good to be in that position, yes. right? And that's where Daniel Suarez was last week. He was in position to take advantage of that that race and put himself in position to win. They hadn't done that in a long time, and I think. And, and he, they all hope that that puts their team in position to take advantage of everything that they have going forward. So now they take that pressure off of themselves, being in the playoffs and doing everything that they did. And But he was in position to win. I'll tell you who won. We won. Yeah. As fans yeah. of NASCAR, yeah. NASCAR won yeah. in a big way last weekend with that finish. But even the guys, you talked to Blaney and Bush, right? They lost and was still pumped up about that finish. Well, that tells you how electrifying it was. And that's how special any race at any time can provide those magical moments. You referred to today in this race for drivers, it's uncomfortable and intimidating. Expound on that before we roll. Well, this is just an intimidating racetrack because of the banking and the high speeds that you can carry through the corners. But on top of that, 
you add the bumps and the wind and everything that goes with it, it's just a it's a very intimidating track to drive. Traffic restarts. My gosh, Chris, yes. you're gonna be, you just told me you're gonna be five wide getting into one. You called it. I can't wait to see it. <laughs> so Kyle Larson is the favorite. Uh, real quick here, is that who you would be leaning towards? I, I like the five and the 24. They've been great. Um, I don't know who you like, but those are the, those are the two that I would pick. I've got my eye on these Toyotas, Chris. I think they're going to come from the back. You know, some of them got some ground to make up, but I think the long run speed in these Toyotas is going to be something to keep an yeah, eye on. Bubba Wallace, right? Uh, he's f starting fifth, finished five, last few races at a five place finish here. Enjoy the call. We'll continue live here from the track in just a moment. in Las Vegas, our aerial coverage provided by Goodyear, powering every lap, every mile, and every victory on the road ahead. Goodyear, more driven. Nice to have you with us for the third race of the season. Time for opening ceremonies. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask that you please rise as you are able and remove your hats as the Nellis Air Force Base Honor Guard presents our nation's colors. Here to offer today's invocation, please welcome Motor Racing Outreach Chaplain Billy Malden. Heavenly Father, as we rise up once again to recognize your presence in our lives, we thank you for your loveness, your goodness, and your grace. We ask you to be with these drivers and teams, officials today. Watch over everybody. Safe day, a great fun day of racing. As always, the men and women of our armed forces, first responders everywhere, we remember you. Father, we ask that your hand of protection and blessing be upon them and their families. May your peace surround us all. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Here to perform our national anthem, please welcome American Idol Season 21 finalist and recording artist, Kyra. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light What so proudly we held At the twilight's last gleaming Whose broad stripes and bright stars Through the perilous fight Over the red Parts we watch were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the Space nearby with the noise. We appreciate you watching the race from Las Vegas. Thanks for being a part of the pre race show, too. Thank you. Thank you very much. NASCAR Race Up, weeknights on FS1. Good luck. It must be nice. That lovely place where the world is on your side. Here they come to the play. Even for an instant. Photo finish! is going to celebrate go. victory lane. It's a hard truth when hard work is left up to chance. But fortune will always favor the bold. Those who put themselves in the right place at the right time. A little luck can make a difference. Making your own. That's life. Fox Sports welcomes you to Las Vegas Motor Speedway and the NASCAR Cup Series. 400 miles the distance around this mile and a half speedway today. 
Some drivers off to a great start for the season, coming off a great finish, which Kyle Busch wasn't happy with, even third. But how about Joey Logano? Front row starts in all three races, but not a single stage point, nor a top rank finish to show for the start of this season, just two races old. Well, winners, losers, comers, goers. How about Ross Chastain? His teammate went to victory lane last week in the closest one, two, three finish in circuit auto racing history. And we've been herding cats, and here they are. Kevin Harvey, Clint Boyer, join me in the broadcast booth as we get set to bring you this 400-mile race. Kevin had a great conversation this morning on the way over here when you talked about the key matchup in today's race. Well, I, I said it was Kyle Larson against his right rear tire, and I think that will be the case today. And uh, Kyle Larson, in my opinion, is the fastest car and he has been the fastest car at Las Vegas but I think it's going to come down to how soon that right rear tire falls off on the long run. Why is that? Because he always runs a loose race car right Kevin? I mean he's always hanging on to that thing. He's a dirt driver. We know that on a long run he does definitely fall off on the loose side of this. Can he hold on to it? All right comfort versus speed. Where do you want to be? Yes. I need yeah. them both, buddy. <laughs> Bad, fast racetrack at Las Vegas. Got bumps down in one and two. A lot of character down there. You got to get through that. Have to find a way to navigate through that. Have to be able to pass. Have to go where they're not. So the navigation and, and how you pick those lines down in one and two is very, very key. Three and four. Really fast, sweeping corner. That outside line, if you can get to their right rear, might be able to get the job done. Well, there. you have to be versatile. And, and the reason that I say that is when you go into turn one, you have to be able to run across those bumps on the bottom and you need to run the middle lane as well because if you can't do those two things you're going to be stuck in the middle lane behind the guy that's running the middle lane behind and through one and two behind him so you have to have a versatile car in order to make passes here and there's only going to be a few cars that can do that all right easy to say but how intimidating is it to do that oh, on this race gosh this is an intimidating racetrack just because of the sheer speed that you get that you have through the middle of the corner and you add those bumps that Clint was talking about it's just a really intimidating track to drive restarts watch out <laughs> gonna be wild all right 400 miles in Las Vegas the West Coast swing now two races long this is the first of two let's go trackside Las Vegas Motor Speedway, this is the moment you have all been waiting for. Are you ready to get the Pennzoil 400 presented by Jiffy Lube started? Here to give the command of fire engines is all pro Las Vegas Raider, A.J. Cole. And now, the moment you've all been waiting AJ Cole with the command. He had a Jimmy Johnson poster above his bed in his bedroom as a kid. I think the hang time on that command was uh, pretty stellar. Welcome back to the NASCAR Cup Series at Las Vegas. Cool flyover with Nellis Air Force Base adjacent to the Speedway. Point standings. Wow, race three, we're already talking about points. Look at the drivers who have had a great start to the season. Great start for Austin Sindrick. How about him? Third place already. Yeah, not a great start for these guys. We have Joey the gun on the pole today, so he needs to have a big day to make some of that ground up. All right, let's see if we can dial up our pole sitter. Hey, Joey Logano, it's Boyer and the boys. I'm the booth. You got us? What's happening? Well, you're happening this weekend on the pole. Again, man, you've had fast race cars. Haven't been able to get the job done at the end of it, but uh, starting up front's got to feel good here in Las Vegas. Uh, it does feel good. We got the right car for it, too. Pencil 400, pencil Mustang up front. Looks good. Just got to keep her up here for the whole race. Um, like you said, we've had some fast cars here lately, so need to capitalize on it today. All right, buddy. I'm telling him to bet on you. All right. I hope it's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Logano, a three-time Las Vegas winner. As we take a look at our starting grid, he will share the front row with Kyle Larson, a double Las Vegas winner who won here last fall. Ford Chevrolet front row. Row number two, another Ford Chevy. 
Rowe, Austin Sendrick, best starting spot since Coda last year. And William Byron, last year's winner here. Row number three, Bubba Wallace is the only driver with top ten fives in both races this year. He's in a Toyota. And Chase Briscoe in a Ford who finished fourth here two years ago. Let's check in with Bubba. Bubba Wallace, Kevin Harvick up in the Fox booth. Man, you have had a great start to this season with two top five finishes. And looks like you've got a good car today. What do you think? Yeah, what's up, Kevin? Uh, man, you know, we're doing exactly what we wanted to do. Start the season off a little bit different than my last six. So proud of the team, proud of the effort, everybody back at Airspeed and everybody on the 23 team. We've been doing a really good job. So got to keep it up. It's only the third race in. So top fives are great, but you got to make them last. you got to make the momentum last. That's what we're focused on today. All right, buddy. Well, that Columbia Camry, it looks pretty lit today. So floor that thing. <laughs> you're too old to be talking like that. Pretty <laughs> <laughs> lit? He even said you're too old. <laughs> Row four. Martin Truex Jr., a two-time Las Vegas winner, and Ty Gibbs, who won here in the Xfinity Series in 2022, both in Toyotas. All right, I got you, row five. Chris Buescher in that 17 car, and keep an eye on Christopher Bell, runner-up to Larson last fall. Starting 11th is Chase Elliott, who missed this race last year, and Michael McDowell, who has had a great start to his season. Row seven, Ricky Stenhouse finished third here in 2020, and the rookie, Carson Hosevar. Row number eight is where you'll find series champ Ryan Blaney, who's finished fifth here five times, and Daniel Suarez, the Atlanta winner. Here's Regan Smith. Mike, one week ago, it was a huge win for Daniel Suarez in one of the most thrilling finishes we have seen in NASCAR history. Daniel told me that that win was important on a number of different fronts, but in particular for his race team, there is a lot of new guys on that team, including his crew chief, Matt Sw Swiderski. That win was a big confidence booster for them as they come not only to Atlanta, but get ready for the start of the rest of this season and try to grow as they work towards the playoffs as this year carries on. Row number nine, Corey LaJoy, back-to-back -back top 15s for the first time in his career. And Tyler Reddick, who's been top 10 in four of the last five Las Vegas races. Jamie Little. Mike, Tyler Reddick is one of those guys that just needs a reset on this season. The first two races of this year, he's finished 29th and 30th. And the team told me, though, they feel like they're much better than where they even qualified this weekend. Mid-pack, he'll start 18th. They said the car drives good. It has great speed. And their main goal is just finish every lap, walk away from Las Vegas with something to show for it. Thanks, Jamie. Austin Dillon, Ross Chastain will be in row number 10. Then you'll find Kyle Busch. And the rest of our lineup will scroll across the bottom of the screen as we check in with our crew chief, Larry McReynolds. Well, Mike, this is a very different mile and a half track than where we were at last week at Atlanta. But two things that are similar is speed and handling. One thing that really helps the handling is rear downforce. And a lot of that comes from the rear diffuser under the rear of the car. Let's go to our Toyota Camry cutaway car and I'll show you exactly how the rear diffuser works. As air flows under the car, when it gets to the rear diffuser, it speeds up. Now, an important part of those five strakes or fins, you want to keep the air organized in those fins. The lower you can get the car, the more it helps the rear downforce. That's why you see these cars so low on the ground. But if you get it too low and bottom it out, it kind of clogs up the air. It takes downforce away. So that's why you try to keep it sealed to the racetrack, but not bottom it up. Now, the bumps in one and two the guys were talking about will exaggerate it, but that's what makes it so inconsistent there is the downforce. Guys, it's a lot easier to control that in three and four than through those bumps in one and two. Well, that's what makes this so challenging is the crew chiefs want to run the car as low as possible. The, the driver wants it to ride as smooth as possible. So there's a fine line in the balance of where you yeah, run the Yeah, those two don't go car. hand they, in hand. They do not go <laughs> hand in hand. So it's a fine balance of, of where you run that car uh, because you don't want to lock yourself into half having to run the middle lane through one and two. You want to be able to run the bottom, but it takes a little bit higher car. I think it's important to note, when we talk about bottom in the car out, it's not necessarily the car hitting the racetrack physically. You bottom out the suspension, and when it does that, that's when it really gets in trouble. Yeah, that suspension has limiters in the in the shocks, and that's actually what bottoms out. NASCAR mandates those limiters on, on how long that shock can be, and this, this is one of those really tricky tracks in, in how you set all that. 
All right, one driver will go to the rear. That is Ross Chastain. I've never heard this one before. Me neither. The wrap started coming off on his hood, and they had to replace the graphics. That's an unapproved adjustment, so he will go to the rear. Uh, Justin Haley had steering issues and did not qualify. Ryan Priest crashed in practice, went to a backup car, so they will also start out back. 65 mile an hour crosswind gust may have done it. That could that do it. Way. I tell you what, today's day and age we're living in, it may have been on purpose. You never yeah. know. Well, none of these cars are painted, except for maybe a couple of the Hendrick cars. Uh, but for the most part, these cars are all wrapped uh, completely. The whole outside of the car is, is wrapped because that's just uh, easier for the teams to do. The three stages will encompass 80, 85, and 102 laps. That pit road speed, 45 mile an hour, you're probably going to see a green flag pit stop, and you're probably going to see somebody get caught speeding. And the pit road entry a little different here than it has been uh, in past years. There's the Toyota Camry XSE uh, that leads the field. All new look with that hammerhead nose on that Toyota. William Byron, the Daytona 500 champion, has also had success here and uh, a new look, new sponsor for his car. And we listened in. And uh, so we're here today. Thanks, guys. Yeah, it's important. Yeah, thanks for all the hard work. First, uh, first start to see it really here to see what we got. So let's work on it all day. You heard what he said right there. This is the regular season. We need to be good on tracks like this. These mile and a half racetracks, still the bread and butter, downforce racetracks. Need that speed that Larry told us about, but I need this thing to handle. And, and for those of you that watched last week that may be new to NASCAR, the reason that we say this week is a little bit different is we, the engines aren't as restricted as much uh, and the, the speeds are higher uh, down the straightaway. So you've got new things to deal with this week compared to what we did in what we consider super speedway races at Atlanta and Daytona. So a little bit different rules package. As they come to the north end of the speedway, turns three and four. Difficult pit entry here. The commitment box is in the same place it was last year, but they have moved the white line that denotes the pit entry and widened that. Uh, you see it there uh, with the black paint is where it was. Uh, the white line is where it is, but the orange commitment box at the beginning of pit road in the same place it's always been. It's going to be tricky getting onto pit road. Yeah, I actually see it better from that angle right there. Just widen that out a little bit, enables those drivers to come in and get a better angle. Here we go, boys. Ford versus Chevy, Logano versus Larson. Green flag, 400 miles away. Whoa, big block by Busher. Looked like Chase Elliott was trying to make a move. That was close, Kevin. Well, those restarts are going to be like that all day because these guys know that the, this is when the tires are the freshest. There's all that apron down there. It's very enticing, and you're going to see them three, four, and maybe even five wide today on the restarts. Already a lot of three wide. How about that? We're in the Nevada desert, so the sand blows constantly. It'll be there on that back straightaway, and we are three and all but four wide. At the line with Truex and Elliott way down on the bottom of the racetrack. Why are they pushing so hard? Because this is the best time to make hay. When these things are, are together, these restarts are always chaotic at Las Vegas because it's so hard once they get spread out to pass. Well, this is, is now. This is going to be the time when your car feels the best. The track's not rubbered up. You've got new tires on the race car, and this is when the, you're going to see the highest speeds probably all day come out of the leaders. Fifth place battle. Briscoe, Wallace, Truex. See Truex turned down right off the bumper of Bubba Wallace. These guys are getting after it. Well, we see Kyle Larson going after the lead right here, and this is what we've talked about all weekend, Clint. He got his car turned in the middle of the corner, was able to run the bottom of the racetrack, and turn right under Joey Logano to take the lead in what we feel is probably the fastest car. And as we talked at the beginning of the race, we feel like it's also Kyle Larson against his right, right rear tires. Zane Smith with a with a tire down. Well, he's got some sort of trouble. Yeah, we stay right green. Down. I think he got in a wall. It may be a bit uh, link there. Toe link, looks to me like he's been in a wall. He drops to the apron in turn two, and we stay green. Well, we see his teammate Carson Hosevar there, and, and on the speed charts yesterday, those guys were really good on lap times. 
Well, Clint, here's what we were talking about. Is Joey Logano going to be able to keep his car up in the front of the pack? Because last year, uh, you know, he had some trouble when the green flag drops and they and they fell back. Well, yeah, and who's he trying to hold off that 24 car? We talked about it and it's been noted last year. 24 and 5. William Byron, Kyle Larson. They were the show last year and look to be again this year. Let's go back to Zane Smith and his issue. Oh, well, he got loose. Yep. Overcorrected a little bit. Still, that could have been catastrophic, especially for all those guys behind him. They're all thanking him. He has got, made it to pit road. They're going to be replacing that toe link on the right rear for sure. Michael McDowell, that yellow car was charging hard way down on the apron on the front straightaway on each of the first three or four laps. And it has, uh, well, he gained a couple, lost a couple. He's right about where he started. Well, Michael McDowell's really aggressive on, on all the restarts, especially uh, when we get to the road courses and some of those braking zones, but he also carries that over to the restarts and is very aggressive. Trying to hold off Christopher Bell there, but Bell and Ryan Blaney move into the inside. Well, you heard me say Larson and Byron, right? They're fast, duly noted. They've been fast here and they're still fast. But I'm looking at these Toyotas. This Christopher Bell right here, prime example. They were a little bit off on the speed, but I think the handling is going to come into play in a big way for them today. Look for them to march forward, all of them. Yeah, and we've got a new right side tire here that, that Goodyear brought. And as we see Ryan Blaney go three, three wide on the bottom of Christopher Bell, Michael McDowell. Bell lets off, moves up a lane. But that new right side tire, we don't really know exactly how far it's going to fall off. A lot of the predictions from the garage are about one second in, in 25 laps as we see Christopher Bell get swarmed by the cars that were following him. Fourth place, Martin Truex going after Austin Sindrick. Clint, that was somebody that you spoke about before the race. Was, is he your favorite, Martin Truex? I, he certainly has to be one of them. He was good in practice. I like what the, the, I saw out of those race cars, but all of them, I, I mean it. All the Toyotas, I think, are come to play and, and are going to be a, a factor in the end of this race. The winners of the last three races here run one, two, three. Larson, Byron, Logano. Got the old huckabuck in the middle there. <laughs> Jamie. Yeah, and I talked to Paul Wolf and Joey Logano this morning about their car, and they said last year these two races at Las Vegas, we tried something different, and it wasn't great. So we actually went back to the setup very similar to when we won this race in 2022. And yesterday in practice, as you guys noted, the boards were down, including the 22. They were able to adjust on that race car and make some adjustments. And we've got a car slow on the track, right? Right, right rear tower, guys. Christopher Bell. Well, guys, this is exactly what we talked about in our meetings this morning. It's it's a it's kind of a gamble on that right rear tire. How much load can I put uh, through the through the bump stop, and and how low can I get the air in that right rear tire? And everybody's going to push it, but I don't know if this is that situation. But we know that these guys want to run as little air as possible in that right rear tire, and this is this is the consequences that come with it sometimes. Christopher Bell, one of the two or three favored Toyotas in this race, having. Right rear trouble. Let's see if he gets up against the fence or if the tire just goes on its own. Uh, not much contact there. Yeah, it looks like that tire was down. You kind of see the car pitch to the right rear and kind of wiggling around a little bit. Could have been worse. First caution flag of the day for Christopher Bell. NASCAR on Fox is sponsored by Progressive Insurance. Bundle home and auto and save. And by Ford. Built Ford proud. 11 laps in in Las Vegas. Caution at lap 10 and whoa, everybody's coming now. Regan Smith. Mike, the 14 to Chase Briscoe right now fighting a number of things in that car. Turns one and two, he's loose, but turns three and four, he's tight. They're going to have to try and work on that. And the 24 of William Byron in second place. Car's unpredictable right now, and then it gets very tight after it's unpredictable. Jamie? Kyle Larson in the five, the race leader. Ten laps led so far. He says it's pretty good, just a little bit tight off four, just keeping him posted on the wind direction. Meanwhile, the 22 of Joey Logano, a little free on entry. Loose one and two, tight off four. That's typical at this point with the wind, guys. Larry, can they make it to the end of this stage? Is that why we're doing this? Let's get back to They that. cannot. They're going to have to get to about lap 18. All right, pit stops after Christopher Bell loses a tire. 
How will that change everybody's strategy? NASCAR on Fox is sponsored by Credit One Bank and by Toyota. Let's go places. Going to be at least one more lap to the restart. Zane Smith got the free pass, got one of his six laps back after uh, he bounced off the wall early, made a green flag stop. All right, pre-race conversations. Take care of that thing back there today. Get some track position quick. Just go to work. Copy that. Five team, we got 400 miles today at Las Vegas. Be smart, be smooth. Let's be there at the end. Let's go. You guys have a good day in there. Good luck. Yes, sir. Have fun out there. We'll fight with you all day long. And more recently, during this caution flag, Kyle Larson and company. It's just at the edge of the fuel window for anyone making it from here, so we can save it. Okay. Well, no matter how much we plan, we, uh, we, we seem to always have a twist in everything that we've done uh, so far this season, and, and now it's a caution today. Well, the other question that's going to pop up right here is how much air you can put at, take out of that right rear tire based upon what happened with Christopher Bell. So that will be a conversation with the crew chiefs and the drivers and the engineers. See some different cars up front, two tires out there. Look like the top five all took two tires. Let's see what they can do with this track position. So everyone came to pit road except uh, we mentioned Zane Smith. He stayed out. Everybody else came in. Chris Buescher out first. Chase Briscoe, Corey LaJoy, Tyler Reddick, Daniel Suarez are the front five on what will be the first restart of the day. And if the start of the race was any indication, this could get big. Well, they're going to get more aggressive uh, as, as we go through the day because they, they know that they have to get the track position while they can. And here's an extra restart to do it. And these guys got to be aggressive with their you know, their laps, their blocks, and things like that. On a deficit of two tires, they lose that track position, they're going to be in trouble. They'll be aggressive with this. Three wide top, turn two. Byron up there. And Larson. And more. Well, I think that's an important pass right there, Clint, with William Byron getting by Kyle Larson. And I think up front, these guys on two tires, I don't, Look at this. I don't know that that's going to work for them very long. This it's, might be, <laughs> I don't know. Five, that's, that's four or five cars passed in one lap, uh -huh. one corner, I mean, excuse me. What a run. And that began back in turns one and two. Great for move. William Byron. Fantastic. Love it. Here comes Larson on that outside. Bottom shot, Corey LaJoy. No, it didn't work that time, but you were all over that. Very important for Byron to get around Larson. Obviously, he's got work to do with, with Briscoe, LaJoy, everybody else that he passed, but getting in front of that five car that he knows is probably that car that he's going to have to beat. That was big, big moment for him. Yeah. William Byron was seventh coming off pit road. Now he's the leader. And that was an un unbelievable pass as we see Martin Truex on the bottom three wide and gets, a, gets stalled out, and now we're going to go all the way down the back straightaway three wide. See the flames out of the pipe of Joey Logano. I would consider the middle kind of no man's land at this particular racetrack through turns three and four, and he gets up behind Austin Sendrick. Can't be in the wake of these race cars. We saw Larry tell us how important that diffuser is. Big block in the inside. Suarez. And LaJoy steaming around the outside, bringing Bubba Wallace along for the ride. Kevin, whoa, that was a pretty block. aggressive block right there. You got to be careful with them blocks. I don't care how fast the race car is. Well, Kyle's already done the work to get by several cars, and he knew that if he got passed by Daniel Suarez right there, that he was going to have trouble uh, probably losing two or three spots if he let him go by. So he was very aggressive with the block and protected that position and didn't have to start over with passing those cars that he had already passed. Well, you got to be careful of that aggression this early in this race. That could have ended badly for him. One penalty on pit stops. That was Todd Gilliland's crew over the wall too soon. So he had to restart out back. Byron Briscoe Larson. One, two, three. Let's check with Larry Mack for our race strategy sponsored by Keystone Light. Yeah, Mike. Split the three stages in half. 
actually maybe come a few laps shy of halfway to get that track position and take advantage of those fresh tires. It's Las Vegas. Don't be afraid to gamble. A late race caution like the last two spring races, maybe change just right side tires. Think about what Cliff Daniels just told Kyle Larson in all three stages. Once the window opens to make it on fuel and the caution comes out, make sure and pit, pack the fuel, save under caution in case it goes caution free to the end. Well, right now they're sitting down there with their calculators and their strategy and, and everything that the engineers do in this situation. Is it going to be better to split what we have left? Do we have enough tires? Uh, should we stay out and run the whole stage? Should we split the rest of this stage in half? There's all kinds of stuff going on. Ryan Blaney almost got himself in big trouble. He crawled right up to the back bumper uh, of Ty Gibbs, and you saw the flame out the pipes as Gibbs lifted over the bumps in one and two, and that almost was contact. Ryan Blaney always very aggressive behind the wheel with his passes and things like that. You never have to doubt his commitment in these race cars behind the wheel. Well, he's got one he's trying to pass. It's the same yeah. way. <laughs> and you see those flames come out of the pipe again. And for those of you at home, that's a great indicator to be able to say, oh, he's all the way out of the throttle. When they let off the throttle, those flames come out of the exhaust pipes on the side of these cars. Larry Mack. Yeah, I want to follow up on what Kevin said. All the debate right now about strategy. And think about this. They only have nine sets of tires to work with today. And one of those is the qualifiers from yesterday, which I'd rather not use. I think if you can make it to the end of this stage, I think you absolutely try to run it to the end and make sure you don't start using tires up too early. Yeah, and that's, a, that's, that's the debate. And I think you definitely want to have tires when you get to the end of this race. Because if you don't and somebody else does, you're going to get beat not only by a couple tenths, you're going to get beat by over a second. Larry, 10 laps in, we saw Christopher Bell lose a right rear tire, and our guess is not enough air in that tire to start the race, trying to get grip and not so much worried about where. When you see that happen to a car you know is going to contend here, how does that change your game? I grabbed the air gauge and the air hose right away. But you think about this, Mike. There's things that's done to that race car that you can't change. The only thing you have control over now is air pressure. Goodyear tells, tells these teams do not go lower than 46 PSI in the right rear. They know they're going lower than that. To your Kevin's point earlier, they did make a change for durability. But that's about the only thing you can do, Mike, now is put air pressure in the tire. Thanks, Larry. 25 laps complete. The Hendrick Chevys of William Byron and Kyle Larson out in front of the field by three seconds in Las Vegas. Do you come or not? We are under caution for the second time in Las Vegas. That is Christopher Busher's RFK Racing Ford. Watch the right front as he rolls through the banking here, and you'll see what happened. A big lift right there already. I think he knew something was going on, what it was. That right front wheel falls off. The, see the lug nut fall off right with it. Wheel comes off. Well, I just, that's a great, great camera work by our guys to, to catch what the, now what is happening right there. You there's see the lug hook. nut and here comes the wheel and the wheel's cut in half. So that was like that for a little bit. You could tell he lifted hard and was already starting to slow down. He felt it probably start vibrate pretty violently and then it, came off. He had taken only right side tires on his pit stop. Oh, he's got some pretty heavy damage there. Yeah, yeah he, he hit hard. If he's hooking the record up to it. I'd say his day's done. From uh, spoiler cam on Tyler Reddick's car. That's a weird one. Yeah, that's a, that's a tough one to to speculate on what what happened right there. We'll have to get some some pretty good analysis uh, from the team somewhere down the road because I don't even know where to start to tell you exactly what happened. Jamie. Yeah, Kevin, I'm in their pit box right now, and Chris Buescher just got out of the car, went up on top of the box, and I saw the team look at him. They just watched the pit stop back. They said they did not get it tight, and that was the problem. Thanks, Jamie. That'll be a that'll be a penalty for those guys as well. Yeah, because when the wheel comes off outside of the yellow lines on pit road, that's yep. when the penalty comes into play. That penalty's 
two week penalty for uh, up to NASCAR's discretion of who they're going to penalize. Usually a changer, maybe the Jack guy, always a little bit different, uh, obviously off the scenario, and then a two lap penalty, but that one's uh, already served. So these 18 inch wheels use a single center lock wheel nut. Larry Mack can explain. Well, let's go to our Toyota Camry cutaway car and we will show you exactly what happens with this Gen 7 car with the single lug nut. On the back side, there's 18 drive pin holes and there's six drive pins. They have to seat into those drive pin holes. You have that locking mechanism right there. When you put the tire and wheel up there and you put the lug nut on, the lug nut should go all the way across that locking mechanism and it should pop up. But sometimes it won't be all the way on. It won't be seated in those drive pin holes. The lug nut will go on there, but the locking mechanism is not engaged and it may take several laps, but eventually it completely comes off as I think we saw there. You can actually see the lug nut bouncing up the racetrack. Yeah, it's a good fail safe system, Larry, but when you're trying to change four tires in nine seconds, things happen. No one has chosen to pit here by riding this out under caution. They should be able to go to the end of stage one without a stop. So while the track crew works on the wall, we'll take a break from Las Vegas where William Byron and Kyle Larson are out front. Welcome back to the Pennzoil 400 presented by Jiffy Lube at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Now I said they could stay out to the end of the stage. I didn't say they would. Suarez does. Most everybody else comes to pit road. It's like Suarez and McDowell. A few others at the back. Regan. Mike Chase Briscoe's car has swung to loose right now. That last change helped him out, but now the back won't keep up with it. He needs help with that. The 24, William Byron, he is too loose as well. Consistently loose to the corner, and it was a late call to put scuff tires on that car. Jamie? Corey LaJoy in the seven. They took two tires on that first stop. They were going to stay out here, but opted to pit with everybody else. The five of Kyle Larson took four last time. It'll be four again this time. Pretty congested there leaving pit road with all but one car on the lead lap. Four drivers stayed out. Suarez, McDowell, Nemechek, and Yaley. Today's aerial coverage is provided by Goodyear, powering the race from green to checkered flag and every mile in between. Goodyear, more driven. 32 laps complete. Let's go back to the restart and watch William Byron come up through the field from eighth on the restart. The reason we want to show you this is because it's going to happen again on this next restart with the cars laying out, uh, staying out, and, and the, the other guys putting on new tires. But William Byron, this all worked out perfect for him. You'll see Kyle Larson try to go to the middle, start to get tight, and then William Byron is there on the outside and gets by what we think is his biggest competitor in Kyle Larson. He's not done taking advantage of that either. Watch this momentum. Stays up high on the outside, and, man, he starts slicing and dicing, baby. Here's the big move right here. Top. All the way to the bottom, that elevator move. Big crossover move. Chris Buescher didn't get the block right there. Had to lift just a little bit, but man, took that baby to the front. Passed them all, one corner. That's how you go from eighth to first in one lap on the restart. <laughs> Daniel Suarez. Last week's winner running up front. Four drivers stayed out. We'll see how they restart. Saturday, it's a huge regular season finale on Fox. First, 12th-ranked Creighton takes on Villanova at 2.30 Eastern. Then at 5, 5th-ranked Marquette battles Xavier. And in primetime, 3rd-ranked UConn faces Providence Saturday on Fox. Here in Las Vegas, 32 laps complete. There's the AMR safety crew on the scene. And if we widen out just a bit, you'll see the welder truck parked at the bottom of the banking uh, so they can get his equipment up there to repair the wall. Now, because of that, they have red flagged the cars and uh, stopped them on the back straightaway so that this work can be completed in a minimum amount of time. Well, since they're stopped, let's try to talk to Kyle Larson while he's sitting on the back straightaway. Kyle, Kevin Harvick up in the Fox booth, and we're trying to explain how racing actually works with Clint. Uh, can you tell us the difference between how your car was yesterday uh, and how this race started today? <laughs> uh, 
ICAR uh, so far feels pretty similar to yesterday. Um, you know, yesterday I was more tight in two, three with the wind and tied off at two. Um, I think the wind is more from blowing from two to four. And then you know, yesterday was kind of one to three. So right now I'm kind of getting tight off of four. So uh, just monitor that, monitor you know, the, the flags here on these campers and you know, try to pay attention to see you know, how the car might change throughout the race. I like it. Now, being as you guys were having a little fun at my expense, now I'm going to have some at yours, Kyle. How about your teammate there getting on the outside of you and passing about eight cars down there in three and four? Pretty cool, huh? <laughs> yeah, I, I remember doing that at timer, timer three to you. Uh, when you were, uh, <laughs> All <just> right. <laughs> notebook and, and try and do a better job. Bam! You're getting better at this. I like that. We'll let you get back to work, buddy. Good luck out there. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> it's, a, it's just a flesh wound, right? Merely a flesh wound. That one cut deep. All right, now Daniel Suarez started 16th. He took on two tires at lap 12, and that jumped him from 18th to 5th at the lap 31 caution. He is the first of the drivers who did not pit and stayed out. Now he's the leader. Coming off the closest first second third finish in auto racing history let's go back and take a look at the atlanta race in 90. beautiful day for racing in atlanta a completely different super speedway racing experience awaits 37 drivers green flag michael mcdowell leads them to turn one trouble one car slides to the infield man that is not what a lot of these guys wanted to see early this is a big wreck we're back under green. Hamlin sliding down toward the apron in turn number one, and caution is out. Hold your breath. Michael McDowell started from pole. Here he comes to the end of stage one. He gets the green and white checkered flag. Crash, William Byron and Michael McDowell have crashed on the apron. No, Logano, Busher, Hamlin pile up on the last lap of stage two. Austin Sendrick will win the stage. Really nice work there, guys. Let's that try four wide. Four wide for yes. the lead. Sendrick, clear. These guys are not lifting. The speed in the 14 makes him dangerous. He's four able to, there he goes. He's around. It's kind of a, a dart without feathers. The four and the nine goes for a double spin there. Whoa, close call. That just lifted Carson and Hosa. Yeah, it was amazing. Wow. You can't afford to lift now. You're going to have to lift in three. Not We're going to find out. In. One lap to go. Here it comes. Kyle Busch shooting a gap. Three wide. Off Look turn at this. Four. Photo finish. Unbelievable. That's too close to call. Race clear is the 99. How the 99. about that? Daniel Suarez. <laughs> They say at Atlanta, the phone has been ringing off the hook for tickets to the next race. That's an easy sell there. Yeah, when you look back at that finish, every time I watch it, I'm speechless, and I, I, I'm speechless again. And, and I, I think when you look at Daniel Suarez and his team and what it means to them, it's a, it's, it's a huge shot in the arm because it takes the pressure off. They're in the playoffs. They know that they can, they can experiment a little bit, but... We heard Daniel say this in the pre-race. He knows he needs to win more throughout the season, and I think that's really where their focus is, is how can we take that and win at more racetracks throughout the whole year and not just one a year? Well, I think you've seen it. Look at this. The momentum, the wave that comes with those wins, the confidence, Kevin, looking for another contract with Trackhouse Racing all happens with a big win like that in Atlanta. Well, he talked about the importance of winning when we went under the helmet with Daniel Suarez. When it comes to winning a race, there is a, that feeling. There is that special feeling that nothing else can give it to you and, uh, and, and you cannot buy. You know, it's, it's a feeling of winning, of, of those hours and sacrifice and discipline paying off. And, and that's a feeling that I think only sports can give it to you. And so cool to win that early in the season. Takes the weight off of Suarez's shoulders. And now, more to come. All right, looks like repairs are close to completion on the safer barrier up in turn one. Let's check in with Shannon in the studio. 
Sure. Well, if you had that on your bingo card in the casino, <laughs> that was not on there. You win. Uh, Daniel Suarez is kind of picking up where he left off. I know, I know it's early in the race, but but momentum is a big thing. Well, they've used a little bit of, of pitch strategy to, to obviously get to the lead, but he's run well the entire race. And you talk about momentum in racing, and he has it right now, being able to get that win uh, at Atlanta last weekend. And and you know, there's been a lot of conversation about the pressure that's been on Daniel Suarez because of how well Ross Chastain has run. And and I know Justin Marks came out and said he's our guy, but I can tell you there's pressure of a, as a driver no matter what your owner's saying. You want to perform, you want to perform equal to your teammates. So it's cool to see him be able to have that great run in at Atlanta, and he's following up with another great run today at Vegas. Yeah, he said in the pre-race show when the guys, when Chris and the guys talked to him that this was a really big race for them to kind of figure out where they are because you do have sort of that asterisk around Atlanta and Daytona oh. because it's a drafting type track. Yeah, I mean, no doubt th those are in their, their own category um, of types of racetracks. He wants to run well at a track like Las Vegas, though, because we have a lot of mile and a half tracks. And really, when we, we say it every year, the season starts when you get away from a Daytona mm -hmm. or a drafting style track. It'll start today. And you have to give an attaboy, too, to uh, Denny Hamlin and Kyle Busch. I know they took those two tires, able to get up front. Yeah, they, the, the race has fallen their way at this point. It sure is. We'll get back to the guys in the booth after the break. Stick around. Spring football on the way with the United Football League. March 30th on Fox, USFL champ Birmingham Stallions take on XFL champ Arlington Renegades in the new United Football League this spring on ABC, ESPN, FS1, and Fox beginning March 30th. We're set for the restart in Atlanta. And hold your breath because Suarez, McDowell, and Nemechek did not pit. And Suarez took only two tires when he pitted at lap 12. Everybody behind them has either stickers or scuff tires just put on. I think those guys are going to get run over. That's my, that's my prediction right here. Kyle Larson is the first with four tires. And he restarts fifth. Here we go. Denny Hamlin with a pair of fresh tires on the bottom in the 11. Yeah, first time we've seen him, but look at Byron out on that outside again. You know that battle between Larson and Byron's going to be heated up. Who can get through this traffic better? Larson beat him out of the pits. It was a big pit stop for them. Yeah, and right now, Daniel Suarez, who has cleared the pack and able to get himself out front, is kind of protected by all those guys on two tires. And, you know, we see the. Ooh, See some close contact there with the three wide up on the top. I can't tell who that is. Looked like Reddick. Or no, excuse me, Bubba Wallace got tight. And it was uh, Byron way up top, just the way they are now. Did I, he get the wall? That's the question. I think he got moved up and into the wall. And we think so. Watch the 24, upper left. And woo. Just scraped it. No harm, no foul. I don't think that's enough to bend a totally green thing like that. I agree. No harm, no foul. I, I like we're, we're seeing uh, Daniel Suarez in the clean air that he got. That is the goal number one. If you got this clean air and you're at a deficit on tires, you start up front, you better come off a two in the lead. McDowell hanging tough in third. Nemechek sixth. Yeah, and I really thought those guys were going to be in a lot bigger trouble than, than they actually were. And maybe some of that uh, red flag cool off period back there gave those guys uh, a little protection against the guys that were on on the new tires and, and getting some of the temperature out of their tires because they took off way better than Look at this I crossover. Kyle Busch to the inside. Three wide for the lead. Excuse me for a second. And Bush will clear them coming off turn four. The old two for one. Thank you very much. Boy, that's frustrating for Martin Truex though. Trying to make a pass and here they come drafting up behind you. Pounce on you. And you see Kyle Larson go to that middle lane and he forces Michael McDowell to go up the racetrack because Kyle knew that he did not want to enter on the bottom of the racetrack directly behind Martin Truex Jr. So you want to go where they're not and you, Kyle Larson's below Martin now. So McDowell and Nemechek kicked back to fifth and sixth while Suarez the other car that stayed out continues to lead. Halfway stage one. Kyle 
push coming to the front. He draws a bead on race leader Daniel Suarez. Didn't look to the inside this time in turn three, but Bush is there. Regan Smith. Well, Mike, we've documented that big win for Daniel Suarez a week ago. He told me this morning that that did a lot for them in terms of being able to try some different things. That race car today has some setup stuff in it that they would not normally have tried this early in the season. But with a win already in the pocket, they can feel some things out, try some new things to get better when they come here later this year. Some of that could also be considered maybe staying out with no tires at certain times in the race. Well, he made a move, a block there on Kyle Busch, and, that, and when you do that at Vegas, that's kind of like tugging on Superman's cape. Well, it also slows your momentum down. If you're Kyle Busch, you saw him approach him, caught him with a lot of speed, a lot of momentum. As soon as he got blocked off, he stalled out. Look at it. Now true exit on his bumper. And Daniel did, did a great job there holding him back. And when you get checked up like that and you lose that momentum, um, you know, it just swallows you up with the guys behind you. And now that Kyle Larson is coming on four tires, now you're in trouble. You're going to be in big trouble. Going to make a move to the inside. You see Kyle go up the racetrack because he, like we talked earlier, he does not want to be in that wake. And Daniel missed the bottom of the racetrack right there, and Kyle was able to get the preferred line through three and four. Still hasn't cleared him. Kyle Busch led that lap, and here comes Kyle Larson to the bottom. Looking for second on Suarez as we look at our Xfinity fastest lap so far. Larson, Logano, Byron, Cindric, and Wallace. Larson to second. It's the Kyle and Kyle show. Christopher Bell. There with Bubba Wallace on the way back toward the front. Bell in uh, 12th place now. That green car. Christopher was our first caution with a right rear flat right rear tire and since then he has made a pretty nice rebound to get back towards the front and we, we obviously thought that Christopher was going to be a car to beat today and he is doing that right now driving himself back towards the front of the pack. Well a lot of times when you battle through some adversity like that and you can make it out of the other end it always is a good sign moving forward. Tells where, you how fast your car is. That's exactly right. Where that tire blew out on him on the exit and not necessarily in the corner, didn't get in the wall. Very lucky to come out of that unscathed. Corey LaJoy, the Chili's cam. He was battling there with Denny Hamlin for eighth place. And here, John Hunter Nemechek have to get out of the throttle as he gets tied up off the corner. See Kyle Larson tried him on the inside, had some momentum, pushed. Moved down and blocked his entrance, and look how far that car took off. You lose a nose in these things, it's hard. You gotta lift out of the gas. Clean air is so important. It's like Byron has picked up a trash bag or something. A lot of debris with all this wind out here. And he has reported well, he, he may is overheating. Larry. Yeah, he may have be overheating, but he is complaining. He said absolutely just plowing, but yeah, oh, that's got no. the whole nose covered right there. We're gonna have to pit. Bush and Larson continue to battle. Byron makes it on to pit road. Wow, if it wasn't for bad luck, Regan? And Mike, when he came on the radio and said he had the debris, or had the debris on the grill, the team immediately jumped up on the wall. The report from Mike Ryder, the temp was 350 when he came down the front stretch last time already. That's, that's high. Hot. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's hot. Larson working him over pretty hard. Kyle Busch doing a great job slowing his momentum, blocking his runs. One one thing to go back on the on the William Byron situation with the with everything that it, that is going on with the engine. That engine will actually go into conserve mode and actually take power away because when it gets hot, it doesn't want to burn itself up. So the the EFI will actually correct the engine and take power away to try to keep it from burning itself down protection mode. Well, if that engine lasts the day after going to 350 degree water temp, that will be pretty impressive. The temperature's one thing that starts blowing water out of it with the water pressure today's day and age with these pressurized systems. That's when you're in trouble. 50 laps complete this time by Kyle Busch. Kyle Larson, Daniel Suarez, three Chevrolets leading the field in Las Vegas.
I am tradition, passed down from the families that race <laughs> to the ones that watch us every weekend. You know, it's all I've ever known, racing. I was fortunate to be in Victory Lane 20 years ago, and I'm here again. I am meant to be passed down from one generation to the next. Because the only thing better than seeing a race is sharing it with someone. NASCAR on Fox is sponsored by Liberty Mutual Insurance. Only pay for what you need. Leaders coming to 24 to go in stage one. You saw Ross Chastain right up to and getting friendly with the bumper of Michael McDowell trying to make a pass uh, back there at what was then 12th place. Bush and Larson continue to run one two keeping close tabs on one another. Third is a battle Reddick and Truex then Hamlin and Gibbs Suarez uh, who stayed out and led at the restart back to seventh. LaJoy, Sindrick, and Christopher Bell in position to score stage points right now. Well, it seems like Ross Chastain is, is headed forward, and that was our pole sitter, Joey Logano. He's headed backwards since the, since the race has started, so they've missed the handling on their car uh, at the start of this race. Yeah, it seems like the Fords, you know, they have the speed. There's no question about it. They have the speed, but don't have the downforce figured out quite yet with that new body. Well, based upon everything that we had going on last year with, with the Fords at these type of racetracks, the cars won't turn in the corner like you like you need them to turn in the corner. So it's just a little it was a little bit slow to react last year and, and in traffic it would just amplify that. So it seems like they might be fighting some of those same problems. Austin Sendrick is the highest placed Ford right now in ninth. You know, Austin would noted it saw that in the points when we were looking at that earlier. I mean, he's off to a great start. Austin Sendrick. That two car, a lot better than they've been. They had a top five run here last year and really kicked off the season to a pretty good start over the over the first couple of weeks and, and like you say, able to put himself in a good position and that's what he needs. John Hunter Niemicek, one of the three cars that stayed out now in 12th place. Yeah, we're starting to see those guys that stayed out start to slip back a little faster than some of the guys that aren't having the the, the handling issues like they are because of the fact that their tires are just a little bit older. The other car that stayed out was Michael McDowell. He's now back in 20th. Jamie? Martin Trix Jr. in the 19 running fourth right now. Two time winner here. They too, meaning Toyota has that new body. And yes, this is the third race of the season, but they said this is the true test. Will our downforce numbers truly match our competition? Will we have a play in the game? And right now they said a little bit tight. But he feels pretty good, happy with the car, the balance overall for the 19, Regan. What a run back through the field for Christopher Bell, who just broke back into the top 10 a little while ago. The report from the driver on his car is that it is very good. No complaints about the car. He's had this race circled before the season even started to get to Vegas, and he's proven why right now. But Kyle Busch does not want to give up this lead. Larson did a good job getting to his outside. I thought he was going to roll right by him, but no, sir. Kyle Busch holding tough on that bottom. Finally gets the job done. Kyle Larson, your leader. Larson's already led for 11 laps. Kyle Busch has led for 19. Well, Clint, we're starting to see these Toyotas work their way forward. You got Tyler Reddick and Martin Truex Jr. and Denny Hamlin and Ty Gibbs. Um, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. And this is what we've been waiting for on this downforce style racetrack to see what the Toyotas could do on a long run because we felt like they were carrying more downforce than, than some of the other cars based upon their speed. Yeah, and with downforce, it's drag, right? Dr pretty draggy on the car. Some of the drivers even commented on it. Don't see that speed on qualifying day. But on these long runs where handling comes into uh, an issue, they really start motion, uh, marching to the front. Let me spit it out there. 18 laps to go in the stage. There's the fight to stay in the top 10 and get some stage points. We're going to take you Fox side by side. Everywhere but the seat. The seat is leather. Alan, we get it. You love your bike. We do too. That's why we're America's number one motorcycle insurer. But do you have to wedge it into everything? What? I don't do that. This reminds me of my bike. The wolf was about the size of my new motorcycle. Have you seen it, by the way? Happy birthday, Grandma! Really? 
Look how the brush strokes follow the line on a gas tank. Hey! hey. Brought my plus one. Jamie. Inez, let me ask you. You're using head and shoulders, right? Only when I see flakes. Then I switch back to my regular shampoo. You should use it every wash. Otherwise, the flakes will come back. He's right, you know. Is that Tiny Troy? The ingredients in head and shoulders keep the microbes that cause flakes that big. Microbes? Really? They're always on your scalp. Little rascals. But good news. There's no itchiness, dryness, or flakes down here. I love Tiny Troy and his tiny, gorgeous hair. He's the best. Make every wash count. Little help, please. Did you see that? Yeah. Hear that. Feel that. Yeah. Is this how you prove you earn the crown? Win is in his DNA. How you shut up the haters. I love it. Handle the heat. Who's going to make the move? It's going to be a must win. Is this a shooting star? Rock star. Superstar. OK, OK. Let's all take a deep breath. Because once we peel out, there's no looking back. You ready? WeatherTech knows that trucks like yours can take a beating. Are you sure? Bring it on. But with WeatherTech's heavy-duty impact liner, you can safeguard the bed while throwing almost anything at it. The underside features an innovative solution. Shock-absorbing rings disperse the impact of hauling, dropping, or dragging your cargo. Wow! No damage! Protect your truck from costly dents and scrapes with a rugged impact liner from WeatherTech. For even more protection, add these premium American-made products. Order today at WT.com. Every home track is the start of something special. Holy cow! Learn more about NASCAR regional tracks near you at nascar.com slash regional. Chili, three for me, a dream gap and a tray. Baby back, baby back, I want my baby back, baby back, baby back, I want my baby back. Bro, this is about the three for me. For 1099. Yeah. Twelve laps to go to the end of stage one. Three drivers trying to stretch it on fuel mileage. Daniel Suarez in 14th place. John Hunter Nemechek, 16th. Michael McDowell in 27th. Will they make it to the end of the stage? We'll see. Uh, Christopher Bell up into the top ten. That's Ross Chastain trying to go by for eighth place. Ross Chastain has been moving. He is going forward in a, in a, in a hurry here at the end of this run. He just ran. 3108. Uh, let's see what this lap is. 3137. So he can slow down a little bit with the pass. That car right behind him is too. Following suit. He just keeps getting better with more clean air, more speed. Likes what he sees. Chastain restarted 22nd. Bell restarted 25th. They're in the top 10. They are the biggest movers since the restart. Yeah, and I think a lot of that, it just took a little bit longer for those guys on the on the old tires that stayed out to go backwards. But you're starting to see the, the four tires start to move themselves forward. The really good cars that were able to do two tires like Kyle Busch have kind of kept themselves towards the front of the pack. Good gamble, just a little too many laps for it to be able to pay off for them. Yeah, like Michael McDowell, he's fallen back all the way to 29th. He's, he's really put the anchor out at the end of this run. Kyle Busch is the one that it's impressed me. Yeah. Holding tough right there. I did not necessarily, boy, you see that car is pretty nervous up off the corner, got loose. Now, Joey Logano restarted 16th. He is in 11th, but he's having some issues. Getting a bit of a vibration here. I'm at last to go, the vibration still work. Well, Clint, for whatever reason, at this particular racetrack, it always seemed like you got that Vegas vi vibration. And you have tire vibrations at Las Vegas and at uh, Texas Motor Speedway, where you have that really heavy, heavy banking and high, high corner speeds. And sometimes as you get to the end of these runs, you hope it's not that right rear tire, but as you get to the end of these runs, it starts to vibrate a little bit. Denny Hamlin pulling down on Ty Gibbs. That's for fifth place. And the battle for the free pass is William Byron, who's just made it past J.J. Yaley. So Byron, after having that huge trash bag covering up his grill and the water temperature shooting skyward, Byron will get back on the lead lap the next time the caution waves. Definitely important spot right there, getting back on that lead lap conversation. Problem is, with these leaders start lapping other cars? Seven to go. Next car to go a lap down would be Kaz Grala in the 15. And yes, that would change that free pass picture. 
William Byron's laps are, are still really good. We're on board with with Tyler Reddick here, and, and you know that his car is pretty good. He's coming forward, but when it's on the bottom of the racetrack here, you know he's got a pretty good car because he'd rather run at the top. Pretty good's an understatement. Tyler Reddick is rolling right now. That 45 car is bad fast. Starting to hear more conversations about these guys having vibrations. I think, Kevin, these, we've, we've noted it. Usually around lap 30 in a run, those right rear tires, we've seen them, they go flat. And one of those drivers is Daniel Suarez, who got right rear tires at lap 12. His left sides have been on the entire race so far. That's a bad feeling. And this is a long run. And the tires are going to wear out. So as the tires, you know, that right rear tire a lot of times will wear all the rubber off of the right rear uh, right down to the cord. So you just don't know where the cars are at this at, at this point because of uh, the length of the run. It, it could be to that point. There's the drop off of the cars that did not come in for at least two tires on the lap 27 caution flag. Five to go in the stage. Larson Reddick Bush. Truex Gibbs, the front five. Pretty good gap uh, back through the top 10, anchored by Austin Sindrick, as they look for stage points here four laps from now. Guys, things have, things have changed here a little bit, and, and you're going to see it right here with Kyle Larson. He's running the top of the racetrack, so he's see him above that that top seam right there running against the fence and if this if this migrates into being the fast lane the guy running first and second will be the best at it Ty Kyle Larson and Tyler Reddick now we know we don't have team orders in NASCAR but if Kyle Larson comes up and laps Kaz Grala that will deny Larson's teammate William Byron the free pass I'd Any laugh chatter him. about that. I'd laugh him. OK. You know why? Because I think he's my biggest competitor. So I would do everything but I he's could a do. Teammate, Kevin. It's OK. I'm laughing him. I got your number now. I tell you who's got the number and that's that's uh, the 45 car of Tyler Reddick. But here's a battle for third. Bush Truex and Gibbs all fighting for third here. Woo, that's a, go. that's a bold move by Ty Gibbs trying to go three three wide right there, but I think that was a smart move to lift out of the throttle, but he's also got a really fast car. Yeah, they're coming. I mean, we that was the question. I needed to see, can these Toyotas take advantage of the downforce that they have on these longer runs? And look here, deep into a run, here they come, all of them. One, two, three of them trying Ty's to Ty's gonna have a huge run off this corner off the top of the racetrack. And a little tight on the exit, but a lot of momentum down here. One to go in stage one. Kaz Grala should be able to stay on the lead lap. And that's important to William Byron. Thing I like about all this, Clint, is how we can move all over the racetrack. I, we, we've got cars on the top, bottom, middle, everywhere. You we may have a new leader coming to the flag for stage one. Tyler Reddick sweeps up behind Kyle Larson and will not take the stage win. Larson gets it. Side by side for third, give it to Truex over Bush, Hamlin, and Gibbs. Remember that Kyle Larson swept both stages here last fall when he went on to win here in Las Vegas. Stage one is complete in the Pennzoil 400, presented by Jeffy Lube at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Here's Jamie Little. Well, Mike Daniel Suarez couldn't have won that race last week without his crew hitting their marks on pit road. So let's meet Team 99 for Track House. Josh Bush, front tire changer, former All-American at Wake Forest University and Super Bowl 50 champion with the Denver Broncos. Seth Godoris, rear tire changer, last week's winners and the closest three wide finish in NASCAR history. Charlie Plank, tire carrier, survivor of the 38 truck at Talladega last year. Didn't skip a beat, great to go. Josh Appleby, Jackman, Hunter, University of Louisville, two-time CrossFit Vitality Throwdown Champion. Milan Radonovich, fuel of the 99 car for Daniel Suarez, former Rutgers football player. And that's the team that got Daniel Suarez in position to win in Atlanta last week. In stage one, four Chevys, five Toyotas, and Austin Cindric's Ford scored stage points. There's the Toyota Camry XSE. 
leads the field here in Las Vegas. A little bit tricky, Kevin. All right, crew chiefs ask me what they need, right? What, what kind of adjustments you need in a race car? Well, I don't really know. I had two tires. I had scuff tires on. A lot of scenarios that I haven't felt on these cars in a long time. Kind of hard to give that feedback. Well, you should have a pretty good read on everything that's happening with today's conditions, with the sun being out and the less wind and um, and a whole run there. I know that the scuff tires and the two tires are, are going to give you a little bit of a misread, but overall, you should have had a pretty good view of everything that's happening and, and also know if you can pull some strategy at the end of the race. But those guys were able to hold on for a pretty short amount of time with the two tires and they cycled right back through the field as as the run went on. And so I, I think that the, the two tire strategy is going to be something that you have to do only for a really, really short amount of time. And keep in mind that uh, Suarez and McDowell and Nemechek have an extra set of tires because they did not stop on the last caution. They have at least an extra pair over most of the teams here. And that could come into play later in a race. You just never know how these cautions are going to fall. Last year we had a pretty straightforward race. The cautions didn't fall and the green flag pit stops. And in this one we hadn't had a green flag pit stop. So this has been, been a pretty interesting start. All right, 33 cars on the lead lap and most all of them will come to pit road right now. Regan. Mike Kyle Busch went through a number of different transitions through that run, ultimately ending up too loose on exit in the in the middle just a little bit. Team told them they felt that was because of the two tires that they, they took on the previous stop. And Denny Hamlin is not bad right now. Told his guys we're just a little bit too tight up top and through the center at the end of the run. Jamie. Tyler Reddick's in a hole when it comes to points. Their goal was to get some stage points and finish this one out. So far, so good. Second on the board. They'll tighten him up just a little bit. Kyle Larson said he had less grip because of the scuffs that last run. They're going to tighten him up just a touch. You see Tyler Reddick. I saw he got into the box, kind of pointed in the wrong direction and too close to the wall, couldn't get out, had to back up. Costly mistake for Tyler Reddick. One lead lap driver did not pit, Kaz Grala. So he is the leader at the moment. Denny Hamlin wins the race off pit road. Kyle Larson picking up right where he left off here last fall with a stage one win. We've come a long way together. From dirt tracks to super speedways and every track in between. Never backing down, pushing boundaries and giving it everything we've got. Yeah, we've come a long way, but there's still a lot more road to run. Goodyear, the official tire of NASCAR. NASCAR on Fox is sponsored by Credit One Bank. 85 laps complete, end of stage one. Kaz Grahl has made his pit stop, so Martin Truex is the race leader. Let's have a look at what's new on Kevin Harvick's podcast. Typically, you want Mike joy to call most of the last lap because nobody really wants to hear us call the last lap. Mike does a much better job at that. And uh, Clint got so <laughs> excited and so jacked up and, and it was just, that was all natural Clint. Mm -hmm. And he just, he was going crazy. And I, I put my arm around him because I kind of got Steady up and I'm him. like, Oh, this is pretty exciting. <laughs> and he's making me excited. And, and I didn't want to get in the middle of, of those two talking. So I just kind of let it all play out and, and, and watch the end of the race. Well, let's hope the fans were excited too. join Kevin every Tuesday and Thursday for NASCAR's number one on the charts podcast. Happy hour presented by NASCAR on Fox. Yeah, we're going to have we've been having fun with that the last couple of weeks. We got SVG on this week to talk about uh, everything he's done in his racing career. And who knows where we'll go. We'll uh, we'll tell you our secret word that we already got in. Hey, uh, who, who knows? Steve Phelps may stop by your podcast one week. That Does would be just stop by our yeah. booth. Yeah, I, I'd say he'll I'd say he'll come by. <laughs> Regan? Well, Mike, what a fantastic stop for Denny Hamlin's guys in the 11 car. Picked him up some spots on pit road there. A.J. Rosini, front tire changer. What is the intensity like when you're out there having to stop like that? Man, it's crazy. It's a great feeling to come out, you know, competing for first place after a good pit stop. You know, that's what we live for. That's, a, that's what we train for. That's what we work for. That's it. That's it's a great feeling. All smiles down here, Mike. Well, and here's a look at it. I love that. I love that. They just did a pit stop, and Regan is down there a minute after after they just completed the stop and and what a what a look inside the sport those guys on the pit crew are so important to the success of your day 
nine point nine four seconds. There you have it. You know what that equals? P1, baby. Thank you, boys. They come a lot easier in that pit area than they do out here. All right, there's a look at the Monster Energy Cam on board Tyler Reddick. We listened in there. There anything on the pit box coming in? Like, it just locked the fronts up. Do much different than the last one. Uh, no, that's a different situation again where they're having somebody come around them. We just need to get pointed out. Worry about not carrying so much speed. Just get pointed out. Make sure we're short. Do what you can do to help a little bit. But obviously, we're all stacked up here in a bad spot. Thank you, Tyler Reddick. I appreciate that confirmation because I just had the argument with my counterpart here in the booth. Uh, the front tires locked up because these pit ball, these pit boxes are so yeah. slick that it, and that is so easy to do. And yeah, look at this, really tight quarters here, almost four wide. You see Ty Gibbs coming out. I think there's a little bit of contact off the side of oh, Kyle yeah, Larson. Yeah. But the big loser here was Reddick. He came in second. He went out 16th. Yeah, it was big. I noticed it. I. I didn't see the front tire lock up, Kevin, but I definitely noticed that car. He had those lines in his pit box, and it was a good two feet inside of where it needed to be. Yeah, well, if you do buy glasses, I'll, you can borrow them. He, uh, my... Hey, Corey LaJoy will restart fourth after a 9.9 .9 second stop. Those Spire boys, they are on it. Absolutely. Here we go, stage two. Truex, Hamlin. Thirty four cars on the lead lap with the addition of William Byron who got the free pass and is back in contention Two Toyotas two Chevys and then the rest of the field. Well the joy making a move on the outside of Martin Truex Jr. for second clear. Spire Motorsports great job. Great stop put him in position to make that move. Corey last week cemented his first two consecutive top 15 finishes, Daytona and Atlanta. Oh, you see him get spooked right there. A late move by Martin Truex Jr. And Corey kind of pulled that car up from, from going all the way to the bottom. And Martin Truex Jr. is going to get position on the inside of him here down the front straightaway. Jamie? Joy, what a run for him. This is a good measuring stick for this team. We expect them to be good on those drafting tracks like he did the last two weeks, but he is so happy with the car, you guys. He said, I don't want any adjustments. My entry is good. I think he's the only driver that has not complained yet today. Three wide for second place here as Kyle Larson tries to take advantage of the Truex LaJoy battle. And Blaney right behind them. Kyle Bush down to the apron. Wow. Well, we talked about Ryan Blaney yesterday and his long run speed, and obviously he's fired off pretty well on, on this particular restart, and I think that could play well as we see Corey LaJoy get tight off of turn two and Ryan Blaney underneath him going into three. Going to get him another one. Yeah, you told me yesterday, Kevin, we were talking about the Fords. Where are the Ford Mustangs? Who's strong? Who's not? That Blaney car in the long run, that was the one that you pointed out. Well, Ryan Blaney has, he has had the best Ford the second half of last year and he, he was always the best Ford for the most part in the races and, and here he is again leading the Ford charge. There's always two parts to these runs and we saw at the end of the last run the Toyotas really start to move forward and now they've worked themselves forward to be able to maintain that position on, on these restarts. We saw Kyle Busch talk about his car getting loose. Most likely that's coming from the right rear tire getting burned off. We see Ty Gibbs up in sixth and I, I think when these guys have the control of the race I think that's going to be interesting to see what Larson has for these Toyotas. Austin Cedric back at 13th there with Reddick. Remember Reddick uh, got bottled up trying to get out of the pits and fell 14 spots during the pit cycle. Yeah, and he's he's frustrated. Uh, I, you know, you do all that work to get past all the cars that you got past, and now you got to do it all over again. So, eighth place, Ross Chastain trying to take the spot from Alex Bowman. Bowman comes back on the outside. 
Well, we really saw the one car of Ross Chastain that that first run, uh, first stage of the race, really come on the second half of of the uh, of the run there, the long run at the end of stage one. So we know his car is really good as we get going forward, and, and the more you can protect that track position at the beginning of these runs, the more you can take advantage of that long run speed. He's taking advantage of that at high line too. That's something they've cleaned that racetrack off, giving these guys the affordability to move around, go where they're not, make that momentum speed down the straightaways. Since the restart, Michael McDowell plus eight, William Byron up six spots, Ricky Stenhouse, Todd Gilliland, Ryan Blaney, Ross Chastain up five, and Tyler Reddick up four. Well, we see Joey Logano get that huge run off the top of turns three and four, and they're going to have to do something different. Uh, he's he's hoping that that high line or something works for his car because the Fords are just not where they need to be. Alex Bowman. Uh, under fire here Bowman's last win came here in 2022. Penske teammates on the right. Logano was the pole sitter for today's race. Behind them that's all is that that is Josevar <laughs> the rookie trying to hold off Chase Elliott Josevar in 14th yeah, and he's had a great great run so far today holding a pretty wheel. Doing a great job at 77 car. I think you're going to see a lot of him this year. I like that kid. He's in a good ride. Just needs to run all the laps today. Experience. Yep. Denny Hamlin's your leader. Six tenths of a second in front of Kyle Larson. Martin Truex another half second back. He's already been a winner once one uh, out here in Las Vegas. I saw he won a blackjack tournament. That trophy said 300,000 on the top of it. I don't know if that's how much it was, but whew. that's a big one. Now back in ninth place, Christopher Bell. Remember back at lap 10, he brought out the first caution of the day when the right rear tire went down. Uh, here's Bell on the way his day has gone so far. Flat tire, flat tire, flat tire. Right rear, right rear. You got two more, one more. Clear there. Caution's out, caution's out. Just take care of it. Don't let rip the fender. Right rear. I feel better than the guys in front of me, and I can keep moving forward. I, I feel my, my head's still in a good spot, and I know that we'll be fine. Yeah, once we get sorted, we'll be okay. This thing's really good right now, Adam. Good work, good work. Talking to crew chief Adam Stevens, I'd say everything's more than just okay. He got his way back to the top ten, and he stayed there. Got through that adversity. Had, got lucky with a flat tire. Didn't damage our race car. Got right back after it. Yeah, he's, My head's in a good place. He's, he's self self-diagnosed. Third place, a couple of former champs, Martin Truex, Kyle Busch. Neither one wanted to lift for that corner, but yeah. Truex had to. All right, 100 laps of 267 are complete, and Denny Hamlin has been out in front for 12 laps. He leads Kyle Larson by half a second. Las Vegas is home to the Sphere, the largest LED screen on the planet on its exterior, and it runs 24-7. Taller than the Statue of Liberty. You two just finished up their residency there. Fish, dead and company among the acts that will play there. And boy, there is a line out the door almost all the way to the strip to see it. Lead change, Kyle Larson. Dropped to the inside, battled Denny Hamlin, and retook the lead. Larson's now been out front for a total of 37 laps. He's led four times. Yeah, just running down, took advantage of that momentum, caught him at the right time and pounced on him. Yeah, Back now that he's point. out front, you, he's really able to put about a, it's a little over a tenth, tenth and a half on the second and third place cars, and getting that clean air is such a huge deal, and being able to finish that pass on Denny Hamlin is, is something that uh, he wanted to get done as soon as possible so that he could start to get, get a little bit of lap time out front, build that distance. Three Chevys, two Toyotas in the top five. Ryan Blaney is the first Ford in sixth. But Kyle Larson leading the way. His team, Hendrick Motorsports, has nine wins here. 
most of all teams in history. And they had a clean sweep last year of the stages and the races. In fact, counting Bowman's win, they've won the last three in a row here in Las Vegas of spring races. Well, we see that 11 car starting to fall off a little bit compared to the, the eight and the five of, of Kyle Larson. As you see Kyle Busch go around the outside of, of Denny Hamlin. So Chevy's one, two, and four, fourth being Corey LaJoy. Corey LaJoy is impressing me. I really thought he'd fall off. Obviously, an awesome pit stop put him in that scenario, but he's holding tough up there, doing a good job there. Great company, Spire Motorsports. That is, uh, that's a stiff competition they're running with. You know, two years ago, it was track house racing bursting on the scene uh, to great effect. Last year's most improved team, RFK Racing, Chris Buescher had a great season. Could this be... Spire Motorsports season to break through. Absolutely, and it's Corey LaJoy's time. He has put in the time, he has struggled. I mean, they were a back marker, right? And they've grinded it out, figured it out. They've got some money in that thing. They've got teammates now. First thing, first time he's ever had teammates. And look at the difference it's making. A win's coming in his future. Well, to his inside is Ryan Blaney, who's going to go by here for fifth place, Regan. Well, Mike Ryan Blaney, the top running forward right now, as we see him clear himself in front of Corey LaJoy. A little contact there, even having a good day, though, and that has come with a lot of good communication. Early on, that race car was so tight, it was chattering the front tires through the center of the corner. He and crew chief Jonathan Hassler working through that, found a way to get it to where now the car is turning good. He's happier with the car all the way around the racetrack right now. All right, 33 laps complete in stage two, which is five laps longer than the first stage at 85. Kyle Larson leading Kyle Busch by almost a second. Kyle Larson leading, Kyle Busch trying to close in from our aerial coverage provided by Goodyear powering every lap. Every mile and every victory on the road ahead. Good year. More driven. 117 laps complete on our progressive race summary. 10 different leaders, 12 lead changes, 34 cars on the lead lap. And Bubba Wallace has come to pit road, so has Ricky Stenhouse. And here comes Under Blaney, Green. they're gonna start. Well, you got some of these guys that are like Ryan Blaney that want to come to pit road early so that they can leapfrog, leapfrog the guys that they're racing around. Regan? Well, we just talked about Ryan Blaney and how that car is turning better for him right now this run. The problem with that, it transitioned to just a little bit too loose on the entry. Both ends of the racetracks, turn one and turn three. Austin Dillon's in. Daniel Suarez uh, making his stop. Ryan Priest. Denny Hamlin from third. Several in tow, Martin Truex Jr. I think that's Gibbs behind him. Bowman, here they're coming. Well, it's forced everybody's hands to get on pit road so they don't lose any time. McDowell, Byron, Gillen. Uh, here is Truex. Gibbs on pit road. Bowman's in his box. Logano, the pole sitter. And Sindrick. Keslowski, Nemechek, and more. Jamie. Leader Kyle Larson coming down pit road right now. They've been adjusting on his car throughout the day. He's been very quiet, though, for this run. Remember, he had that run in with Ty Gibbs the last time he came into his pit box. As they cal calculate the timing, they count him down into his box, expecting to take four tires here. They told him to go on the jack. Don't have to wait for fuel like we saw so often last week. Around the left side, Ross Chastain has taken over the lead from uh, Tyler Reddick and Christopher Bell. Everybody pitting under green. And here is Chastain. He'll give up the lead to come to the pits. Reddick and Bell right with him. Austin Sindrick, too fast entering. Well, this is a this is a tough pit road because you have to do all your braking, braking all the way around the banking uh, to get to pit road, and it's really easy to speed in those first couple sections. 
and off the banking, right? You were telling me yesterday, really slams these cars down off the banking when they get on a flat. That's why they move that line around the corner a little bit more to help these guys get in. So everyone has track. pitted except for lap down cars, J.J. Yaley and Zane Smith. Take a while to sort this out, but Larson cycles back to the lead with Hamlin, who was third, now second. Uh, Daniel Hemrick, too fast, exiting pit road. Well, we see Ryan Blaney is going to be third right there. Uh, Kyle Larson and Denny Hamlin won two, but Ryan Blaney, he leapfrog leapfrogged a couple guys on that pit stop. And Ross Chastain, who pitted as the leader. Oh, too no. Fast, too fast entering. And that's all the stuff that you want to preach to your driver. We've got to do the little things right. You've got to be able to get down pit road, not speed. I know we want to get as much time as we can, but we can't have penalties on pit road. Do not beat yourself. Do not beat yourself, 100%. All right, the green flag cycle is complete, but for the penalty drives down pit road. Ryan Blaney was fourth, now third after the pit stop cycle. And uh, we were fortunate to be able to listen in to their pre-race briefing for the pit crew. You know, good job, Atlanta. Despite honestly being, you know, a little bit uh, sloppy on pit road, race today uh, is 267 lap race. We can go about 65 laps on gas. Like I said, we don't have a ton of tires, so there's certainly the opportunity to use use scuffs if we get, um, you know, uh, some early cautions stacked on top of each other. So, you know, just be ready. Um, if I call for those, get those on the wall. And most of the teams did take the opportunity to put uh, at least two scuffs on back at the caution at lap 10. Fantastic. According plan, boys. Great job. Penalty stop. That's the Kubota cam on Ross Chastain's car. And that will cost you uh, at pit road speed, I guess, about a lap and a half to uh, make that drive down pit road, get back up to speed. You'll lose about a lap and a half to the leader by the time you're back at speed. Lap and a quarter, lap and a half. 125 laps complete, closing in on halfway. Kyle Larson in command in Las Vegas. Closing on halfway, 130 laps complete, 137 to go here in Las Vegas. Kyle Larson leading Denny Hamlin now by almost two seconds. Hamlin picked up a spot in the uh, pit road exchange there when everybody came in under green. Well, when these when, when these fields get strung out like they are right now, you want to be able to try to leapfrog the cars that you're racing around, especially if you feel like you're faster yeah. and be able to to get by them under under a pit strategy because it's just easier to pass while you're under the strategy or on pit road. Yeah, utilize the strategy, right? And that's exactly what you do. Short pit them, take advantage of a good pit stop. We listened to the, his crew chief talking about that plan pre-race, and the, they knocked it out of the park. I mean, that is execution at its finest right there. 29 cars on the lead lap. Ross Chastain, who had a penalty pass through, is the first car one lap down. Got some audio on Kyle Larson and uh, Cliff Daniels and the changes they've made. Well, we talked about it in pre-race. It was Kyle Larson versus his right rear tire. And, and <laughs> right. why we say that is because he can run his car looser than, than most people. But you hear Cliff talk about the fact that uh, they needed to take care of the right front tire by freeing the car up. So that, that is definitely not, not what we're talking about. But it is definitely always a tire strategy and a balance strategy. Now, uh, Corey LaJoy, who just lost ninth spot to Chase Elliott, had some issues on pit road. Jamie? Yeah, Mike, we've talked about how well he's been running today and what a great stop they had the time before last. But this is what happened most recently when he came into pit. Watch that right rear. They could not get that lug nut back on. You see him signaling, wait, wait, wait. He's trying to get it back on, had to wait. That cost him some valuable time, but he's fighting his way back right now. Still sitting 10th as they run. A good recovery there for a car that's been 
in the top 10 most all day. Tyler Reddick seventh right now. Restarted 15th. And William Byron got the free pass on the stage ending caution at lap 80. Uh, so Byron restarted 34th. He's gained 18 positions. Yeah, things rapidly unraveled for him. Uh, I mean, to the point of running over a trash bag and had to pit, but he's slowly but surely digging himself out of that. If anybody has the speed to match the five car, it's definitely his teammate, William Byron. He's just got a long road to hoe still to get there. Well, I think the team's just happy that it's still running. Yeah, yes. 350 <laughs> degrees, that's pretty hot. I've been watching Kyle Kyle Bush's last few laps on the scoring monitor, and he's definitely got some pace in that car right now. See him go by Ryan Blaney and Denny Hamlin. I agree with you, Kevin. The RCR has to be happy with their pace so far. The performance, super speedways, this downforce, mile and a half. Now this is Ross Chastain trying to get his lap back the hard way. Had to make that penalty drive through. Uh, but he has closed on race leader Kyle Larson here. It also tells you something about the speed of his car because he's able to hang right with Kyle Larson and and I think with the clean air being up towards the front obviously gives them a read of hey we've, we've got pretty good speed in our car we just need to get the track position. This but, is the first gauge right this is the first regular season downforce mile and a half package. Larry's told us about the speed conversation, the, the downforce, drag, and everything in between that. You have to have that balance correct. And when you leave this place or run, the well, uh, run as well as they have at Las Vegas on these mile and a half, so that gives you a good feeling moving forward. Well, we've seen, we've seen Ty Gibbs be as high as anybody going through turns three and four for as long as anybody has been doing it. So he's, he's definitely got a good car today, especially on the long runs. But he's got options. I like that because he can, he's able to run up the racetrack where not everybody is. And one of the things that you need here at Las Vegas, like we talked at the beginning of the race, you need to have options going into the corner. I need a versatile car. I need to be able to run at the top of the racetrack like like Ty is right here. Split the scene this lap. Move down one yeah. lane. And a lot of times you split that scene. You'll you'll notice when we go in the corners, uh, right around those seams, the racetrack's a little bit grayer than than other places on the racetrack. See Byron getting him another one. So you look at the lap down cars that includes Bubba Wallace uh, who had trouble on the right rear with the lug nut and that has put him three laps down back there with J.J. Yaley. Uh, Zane Smith had trouble early uh, brushed the wall had to come in for repairs under green and the one lap down cars are Chastain Haley Sindrick and Hemrick uh, mostly due to penalties. Twenty four to go in stage two. That will be lap 165 at the end of the second stage with Kyle Larson leading. We'll take you box side by side. The Bush Guide cold and smooth survival skills. Hello. Should you become stranded, be ready to signal rescuers. Bush. How long have I been out here? About uh, 12 minutes. Head for the mountains. All the parts you need at the prices you want. Guaranteed to fit every time. So you can keep your ride or die alive. Now, we get ready to rumble in Richmond. Virginia is for lovers. Of a return to racing under the bright lights. It's a night race with people are jacked up. Of a rocking infield experience that offers unparalleled access to your favorite NASCAR drivers. Oh, of a spring weekend full of friends, family, and electric short track action you'll never forget. NASCAR Weekend at Richmond Raceway. Get your tickets now at richmondraceway.com. 
Cracker Barrel was founded on the simple belief that freshly made food should be served up at a fair price. Today, that's more important than ever. So we've got over 20 meals under $12, including all the generously portioned classics that made us famous and the signature sides you've always loved. All served up with an extra helping of care. Eat, shop, earn. Cracker Barrel Rewards. What do we got? Porter. A lot of cats. How many cats? I don't know, man, like 400. What do you ladies want to watch? Why are there pool noodles on the goat? <laughs> it's a 100-year-old tortoise, born in the 1920s. This guy was probably pretty racist back then. Let's get these trash pandas in the truck, everyone. Uh, they get in through the AC duct and hit the bar. All these guys 21? The Animal Control season premiere this Wednesday on Fox. Did you see that? Hear that? Feel that? Let's all take a deep breath. Because once we peel out, there's no looking back. You ready? Sing. Go ahead. I feel better. Elvis always makes me feel better. I tell you who feels better. He was dancing. Yeah. Look at this. 77 of 148. There's my guy. He's here. Darn right. There are about a dozen of him that are uh, up there on that it. platform. Having fun. Sure. Having fun in the infield. Kyle Larson's having fun. Yes, he is. About to put Cass Grala. Uh, one lap down here. How about the second place car, Regan? Mike Kyle Busch having a great day after starting relatively deep in the field. I talked to his crew chief, crew chief Randall Burnett, earlier this morning. There was some concern in their hauler about what they were going to get today. They couldn't get his car to the bottom of the racetrack on entry yesterday. Made some significant adjustments, and nothing that Kyle Busch does on a racetrack should surprise us. Very good right now. Car just a little bit too loose for him with no grip off of the corners. He is uh, holding station, as they say, four seconds back of the lead. Denny Hamlin's about to come into that picture. Ryan Blaney, another second and a half back. Well, they're trying to keep a lid on the pit box, and it's trying to blow away. Is that the biggest problem, Kyle Larson? I'll tell you today? why it's important, because that head right there on that man, you need to keep that thing cool. Guy is one smart cat. Leads a charge for this five car. Does a good job. Cliff Daniels. So uh, the wind appears to have picked up here as Carson Hosevar has just pitted from 14th place. Right front flat on uh, Hosevar. That's why he had to stop. That's too bad. I don't know. It came from damage or anything. He was racing hard with those guys. Man, he was doing a great job. A great job inside the top 15. That's just what the doctor ordered for those guys. Got a little hiccup here to overcome. Maybe they can get it done. Now, Ross Chastain now is no longer the first car one lap down. He is third because Kyle Larson keeps lapping cars. Derek Krause in the 16 is the first car one lap down. You saw him lap Kaz Grala. He's the second. So uh, Chastain's got work to do if he's going to get back on the lead lap. Well, that's <clears throat> that's the problem with the situation like uh, Ross is in. It just kind of gets worse on these on these green flag runs, especially when you have a leader like Kyle Larson that's out there running great lap times and putting more cars a lap down. Chase Briscoe, the Mahindra Cam. Briscoe had a tough day in Atlanta, but here he is running 13th. 17 seconds back. Make that 12th. Is he in uh, 
Well, 13th now. William Byron goes by for 12. Frisco 13. Yeah, and Chase pitted a little bit early, so I think as the end of this run goes, he's going to start falling back a little bit just because of the fact he has a little bit older tires. Fourth place, Tyler Reddick. Overcoming that pit stop. Here he comes back again, tail into this run, just like we had on that long uh, run last time. Tyler Reddick getting back up where he needs to be. Fast race car. But think about how long that's taken, Clint. That really emphasizes the point of making a mistake on pit road and doing the little things wrong and how long it takes to make your track position back up. Well, 10 to go here in the stage two, and that's exactly where he pounced on and passed a lot of cars in that last 10, 15 laps. Great momentum, digging himself out of a hole, making a difference up. Harrison Burden, the 26th place car, about to go one lap down. Oh, no trouble. Christopher Bell is around off of two. More trouble for him. I don't think it's comes. It's no right rear tire flat. That thing was up. Leaders in two now. Fourth caution of the day. Christopher Bell was in 14th place when this happened. That yeah, looks to like see. all the tires are up, Clint. Oh, I have to see here. I think he just lost it, guys. He was in the way. Tires are up and don't pit. Tires are up, don't pit. They're definitely up. Didn't get into the wall, it doesn't look like. See, you see him right behind Chase Briscoe here. Gets loose. Round she went. Just Caution lost out. It. Yeah, right in the middle of that corner is where the bumps are that we talk about. And the higher up the racetrack you go. And, but a lot like last week when we go to when we were at Atlanta, Clinton, we see those cars kind of halfway poked out with that right front fender. It puts you in a position to where the car can get freer, especially if you're on the verge of being too, being too free anyway. All right, so uh, Kyle Larson had not quite uh, lapped Harrison Burton, so Derek Krause gets the free pass. Yeah, just overcome. He's running 14th there was, again, I, I say he's digging out of that hole that the right rear tire had him uh, with a flat tire that first run. Now we're right back where we started. Yeah, and you see all that smoke out of the back of the car. Well, what, as a driver, what you do right there is you floor the car. And the reason that you floor the car is it drives the car down the hill to keep it from backing the, up the racetrack and hitting the fence. The other thing you don't do is overcorrect. It was these cars and Not the tires are on the left side weight. It was a, a heads up move by him to keep that thing locked down. And just like you said, floor it, get this baby headed back down the hill. Now, pit road will be open this time. Eight to go. Will there be any gamblers? Probably not. I'd say they're all coming. Might see some two tires, stuff like that. And pit road will be a busy place, even with eight to go in stage two. Regan. Like the A-car, Kyle Busch in second place right now. Fired off really good after that green flag pit stop, but it fell off too quick for him. Car fell on top of the racetrack and greasy all the way around in the 11 to Denny Hamlin. A little bit edgy on entry. Doesn't have comfort getting into the corners. Around lap 20, it got really loose. Jamie? Tyler Reddick in the 45, nice and smooth into his pit box. Still a little bit loose. They've been tightening him up each stop. Meanwhile, the five of Kyle Larson, they had made that air pressure adjustment to help those tires last longer. He said took off just a little bit but obviously happy. Uh, Brad Kozlowski had to back up to get out of his pit, and he'll come out at the back. See Josh Berry having trouble getting out of his box as well. Uh-oh. Oh, Ty Gibbs. Don't let that tire go, guys. Get that oh. tire. Wheels fell off the bus there, boys. Frustration sets in. A lot of trouble for Gibbs in the pits. Yeah, and I want to go back to you, your comment about Josh Berry having trouble getting out of the pits. These cars, are they don't turn very well when you're in a pit stall, so it's really, really difficult to be able to get the car turned uh, to the right to get out of the pit box. When they're going fast, they're really, really twitchy, and, and the steering is pretty nice. But when they're sitting there at low speeds, it is tough to get the car turned and out of the pit box. So we're going to have a few laps to race here to the end of stage two. There's your Fort Cam on board Brad Keselowski who was a little deep in his box, not way deep, but he had to back up to get out. And that's why 
Uh, he is back there. Uncontrolled tire for Ty Gibbs. That will be a penalty. Next Sunday on Fox, the NASCAR Cup Series goes to the Arizona Desert in Phoenix. Pre-race 2.30 Eastern. Engines fire at 3.30 for the Shriners Children's 500. Next Sunday on Fox. And here's some radio on car 54. Where are you, that, your wheel? Uh, I do not have a first gear. This pilot transmission is broken for first gear. Well, you don't need it much, so just use second. Well, well but if there's parts rolling off. around in that yeah. transaxle, that could cause it's, further issues. Yeah, it, it is definitely not not an ideal situation because of that that scenario there, Mike. And he's frustrated. Yeah, hard to get in and out of the pits. That's where you're going to have trouble. First gear, that's definitely exiting pits. Um, already had trouble, right? Now we got an uncontrolled tire. Now we got to start at the back. Yeah, and that was just a, a bad cycle of, of circumstances right there. All right, cars that did not pit taking the wave around. There are seven of them that will get waved around back to the lead lap uh, headed up by Kaz Grala. So they sweep around the Toyota Camry XSE safety car. And we'll get back to the lead lap. And they'll include uh, some of the cars that were penalized like Austin Sindrick and some that had uh, had to make an unscheduled stop like Carson Hosomer. Regan? Well, Mike, a slow stop for Kyle Busch down here on pit road. They had to actually go back around the car to get to the right front. They did not get the lug nut all the way onto the car. You'll see right here. They think that it's good. And when they drop the jack, the changer waves his arms. Fortunately caught it in time, but it cost him a lot of track position. So Kyle pitted from second place. And saw him, it's now 18th. You saw him looking at it. He didn't want to believe it, but that was a good heads up move. You hate to do that, but you have to do that. That wheel cannot fall off. I want to talk Alex Bowman. Said it. Who's going to gamble inside of five to go here? He put two tires on that 48 from 14th place. Let's see if the gamble pays off. Well, the question I have is for Larry, and, and we had to put these tires on late in this in this stage in order to compete, and that, that probably puts you in a little bit of a box with your tire count, Larry? It does, because we were doing pretty good on the tire count. Most of them had only used about four sets. Remember, they have nine sets, including what they started to race on in the qualifiers. So, yeah, definitely it, it, it puts different folks at different strategies as far as number of sets of tires lap, because remember, we've got over 100 laps to go in this thing. And we now have 33 cars on the lead lap, including Derek Krause, who got the free pass. The only cars laps down are Bubba Wallace, J.J. Yaley, and Zane Smith. Chris Buescher, the only car out of the race after uh, cutting down a tire. Lap 27 hitting the wall. Pace car is in. Bowman and Larson will lead them to four laps to go in stage two. That Chase Elliott fan right there, he likes what he sees. Finally. Chase Elliott back in the game here. Stage points on the line. They're going to be going for it. Four wide. wide for an instant. I told you we'd hear it today, Clint. Look at the runs coming all over the place. A lot of blocking. How about these two tires from Bowman? Got tight right here. Larson to the inside of him for the lead. Who says we can't have a finish like last week here? Redick is back. Bowman for second. Reddick underneath him. Hamlin coming around on the outside. Blaney on the bottom. Big momentum for 11 and Denny Hamlin. Bowman still holding strong on this outside on two tires. Better block. Truex there too. Five cars racing for second. Yeah, and you saw Denny Hamlin getting a push by Martin Truex Jr. into the corner, and he was like, oh man. He's getting tied. Bowman's getting tied down. in the wake of Reddick in front of him. Hamlin to the inside. The 5 and 45 finished in that order in stage one. Here we come to one to go in stage two. 
You're going to have to deal with that 45 car the rest of the day if they don't make any more mistakes. He's rebounded from his mistake, and he's going to be racing with Kyle Larson for the rest of this event. 100 percent. Redick High loses a car length at turn two. And Larson's draft going to three, gets half of that length back. Trying to break that draft, Kyle Larson. Looking to the outside for the stage win right here. Not going to get it done. Kyle Larson sweeps the stages as he did last fall. And for 10th in the final stage point, give it to Eric Jones over Chase Briscoe. Looks a little like it land all over again, except Kyle Larson is the stage two winner. Stage two is complete at the Pennzoil 400 presented by Jiffy Lube at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Kyle Larson over Tyler Reddick, Denny Hamlin, Ryan Blaney, and Martin Truex. Here's your aerial coverage provided by Goodyear, powering every mile and every moment on NASCAR's road to victory. Goodyear, more driven. So at the end of stage two, who will come and who will stay out? Here are the points earned so far today. Kyle Larson sweeping both stages as he did here in route to victory last fall. That's the one that hurt right there. That bad pit stop on Kyle Busch and company in the eight car really hurt them in this points conversation here. They should have had stage points. We've been told Larson will stay out as will a number of the leaders. The question on those that pit will be two tires or four. You know Bowman's coming. Yep, he's the first one in. Alex Bowman, William Byron coming. Let's crank it up for you. That's Kaz Grala backing up into his pit after he had left. It is. And looks like they'll check the right sides for tightness there. We're under caution. End of stage two. Kyle Larson, the stage winner over Tyler Reddick. Day studios from Las Vegas just wrapping up stage two out there at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway. Shannon and Jamie here. A lot of action on the racetrack, a lot of action on pit road. Let's get you caught up with all the highlights from the race so far today. Long day for Christopher Bell. Oh, he's been involved in two exits. She had, she had a, a tire issue here early on on lap 10. Got him to the back. He worked his way back up to 14th and then obviously brought out the caution just a few laps ago. Christopher, but Chris Busher, you know, he had some issues and this brought out the red flag for a while. Yeah, lost a right front wheel. We actually saw the lug that come off and then they had to go in and had to weld the wall up. Shannon, but they about 10 minutes to get this fixed. This, though, is interesting <laughs> because Byron had a car we thought capable of winning at one point in the race. Has a little bit of debris get on his grill. Ugh. He lost a lap but was able to get back on the lead lap. Just pinned. It'll be interesting to see what he can do. Someone's not going to be able to clean up their campsite tonight because that back. <laughs> on the front of William Byron's. Uh, Tyler Reddick, he has a bad pit stop, dropped all the way down to 16th, running second right now. Yeah, not a bad pit stop. He actually slid through his stall, was at a bad angle, struggled to get out, had to back up. Right here, though, Ross Chastain was one of three guys that got a speeding penalty, lost the lap, is back on the lead lap right now. And here's Christopher Bell again. We talked about it. Had a spin, and this has actually put him a couple of laps down. Uh, but Kyle Larson, he has been the guy to beat all day. But I think Reddick's going to challenge him. Here. I know you said that before we came in here, but here's a here's a little McNugget for you guys. Four times in his career, Kyle Larson has swept all three stages, looking to do it five times today. Well, that leads us right into our Credit One Bank ones to watch, Shannon. So, uh, Clint, who not named Kyle Larson, 
do you have your eye on? Well, he's going to have to get the job done. We know Kyle Larson's fast, but the one I'm keeping an eye on is this Tyler Reddick in the 45. He is fast. He's keeping him honest. He's been second to Kyle Larson in both stages. But if anybody can beat that car, I think it's Tyler Reddick. Well, the car I'm going to pick, unlike you, has been very quiet today, and that's Ryan Blaney. He is the champ and kind of sneaks up on you really everywhere that we go. And today I feel like he's done that. He's been quiet and right there, and he's written, uh, sitting in fourth right now. Definitely carrying the Ford flag. Well, Denny Hamlin won here in 2021. He's still looking for his first top ten of the season. But I want to watch Hamlin because of something he said on his podcast. He congratulated everybody for that finish at Atlanta. And I think it was the greatest finish in NASCAR history in which nobody crashed. And that was the point he made on his podcast. So uh, great. Let's see how he does. Let's I see how they do. I think we're all right. I do. I like our picks. I like, uh, well, this Kyle Larson. Yeah, well, yeah. Kyle Larson. You know, I mean, <laughs> man. Saturday, it's a huge regular season finale on Fox. 12th ranked Creighton takes on Villanova at 2.30 Eastern. Five o'clock, more hoops. Fifth ranked Marquette battles Xavier. And in primetime, more hoops. Third ranked UConn faces Providence. It all tips off Saturday on Fox. Bubba Wallace with an extended stay on Pitt Road. They have uh, a stuck lug nut on the left front. They are going to have to cut that nut off uh, to remove it and replace it, hopefully without too much damage to the threads. Meanwhile, the field is coming to green for stage three. It'll be 95 laps to go. Larson and Reddick, Chevy Toyota front row. Here we go. Got him back on their feet here. These restarts are wild. Comes Kyle Larson already looking to the outside. Excuse me, Kyle Busch. A lot of three wide, big runs off turn two on the top. Three wide for second. Well, we see a lot of three wide, like you say, Mike. Uh, More wide back here, boys. Yeah, and what we've got right now is we've got a mixed up field. We've got the guys that stayed out in the front. You got the back half of the field that said, the heck with it. We're going to come in. We're going to take a chance, put stickers on. And they drove right through the middle and around the outside uh, with those new tires. And NASCAR has said the restart is under review. Ooh. One thing that it happens at this particular racetrack, you cannot go below the white line before the start finish line. So it'll be interesting to see what this looks like. And NASCAR has approved the restart. No penalty call. Still free wide. This Short time this for fifth out. place. Chase Elliott holding strong in that middle. Haven't seen much of him today. Starting to show up when the time's right. The old pay window getting closer. Got into the top ten before the end of stage two. Briscoe comes up the racetrack in front of those cars. He was battling three wide, bold move in front of Chase Elliott and Ryan Blaney. Ooh, look at this mess back here. Well, the guy that we talked about that I was talking about uh, before we went green there, Ryan Blaney, he didn't have a good, he didn't shake out very good on the way all that shook out with uh, the restart there. Lost several spots. No, Blaney is seventh and under fire from Austin Dillon for that spot. Trying to come back now against Elliott. Blaney back up to sixth. And there we see Austin Dillon in the three car, Clint. We haven't said much about him today. He's had a, a very good run. We've talked about his teammate right behind him there in the eight car of Kyle Busch. But Austin Dillon having a great day today. Well, he was struggling early, right? And Kyle Busch was up there running well. I kept looking over my shoulder. All right, where's his teammate? Where's Austin Dillon? I don't know. Maybe he got some information. Maybe they were on a different air pressure or something. Woke that car up for sure. And it could very well have been that because these cars are very sensitive to air pressure. So if you have a teammate that's running good and the air pressure is way different, you put that in your car, it could very well have fixed it. Yeah, Dillon is now seventh. But to your point, his average running position today, 18th. Mm. That clean air. Talk about wake up. With clean air, they just keep getting a handle a little bit better with every position. Ty Gibbs moving past Dillon up into seventh place. And loses the spot back to the older of the Dillon brothers.
I'll tell you what, Josefar's climbing back up there. That's the true test, right? What do we have for a race car? If you got it up there in clean air, that's one thing. You get it back here in this mess and dirty air, and that thing's still making hay, you've got a pretty good hot rod. Yeah, it's one thing for your race car, but it's also another thing to see the temperament of your driver and how he reacts in those situations. Young guy, hasn't been in these situations a lot, um, obviously knows how to put the gas pedal down, but we see Josh Berry up on the outside trying to figure out where to take all that momentum. Had a big run on Hosebar on the outside, but could not pay it off, not that time. Todd Gilliland in the mix, who led the most laps at Atlanta last week. Yeah, we're on board with Corey LaJoy, Carson Hosevar's teammate. You see Carson peeking under uh, the back bumper of Corey LaJoy, LaJoy and going on by. Well, not all, not all the way by, but he's there. You mentioned it earlier, Clint, this Spire team has done a great job. They brought great cars today raced competitively up in the front half of the field. Corey LaJoy's been at the front. Josevar had a penalty and has, has worked his way back towards the front, so. Bruce of the pudding, depth, right? Now we got depth in an organization. We got teammates, again, we've covered it. Sponsors, all that stuff just keeps getting better and better for them. Noah Gregson at his home race, trying to break into the top 10 here. He's one spot away from doing that. Was quick in the opening laps of practice yesterday. Did not translate to a, a great qualifying spot, however. But he's knocking on the door of the top ten. His teammate Ryan Briscoe up in fifth, the leading Stuart Haas car. Gregson second in that group. Ross Chastain back on the lead lap. Remember, he was one of those cars that took the wave around on the caution just before the end of stage two, since he was not going to be in position to get the free pass. Sixth place. That car keeps getting better. Austin Dillon, this three car. There's the car that keeps Ooh. getting better. That 54 car right there. We we covered their pit stop and everything that went wrong. Lost his first gear and oh, he's driving like he's mad. Rolling, baby. He, he was mad. He <laughs> is mad. He's rolling to the front, though. Nice recovery from that uncontrolled tire penalty just a bit ago. And we've talked about Ty Gibbs and how close we think he is to winning. And this is a great racetrack for Joe Gibbs racing in their cars uh, notoriously with whether Xfinity cars, cup cars, no matter what that is. And Today he's running well. The problem he's going to have are the three Toyotas ahead of him. Reddick, Hamlin, and Truex, second, third, and fourth. Kyle Larson giving the field the goodbye look. 2.3 seconds and growing is his lead. He is right now the fastest car on the racetrack, of course, in clean air. But his lap times, four one hundredths or more better than anybody who's chasing him. Yeah, it's a good old fashioned butt whooping right now, but the day is still young. Look how that car changing at wake in front of him upset Kyle Busch. Thing really shot up the racetrack as soon as that wake crossed in front of him. Which one are you betting on, Clint? Well, right now I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna bet on Kyle Busch wins this right. But I am. Ex I'm really happy with what I saw in Austin Dillon. It had to have been Kevin, some sort of an air pressure deal or something. Yeah. That car just instantly after a pit stop came to life. On board the Mahindra tractors camera here with Chase Briscoe. He's running fifth right now. He kind of snuck in there on us. He's kind of been 10th of 15th and all of a sudden here he is fifth. That's the leading Ford in the race. Ryan Blaney right behind. Another Mustang. And they're the only two Fords in the top 10. John Hunter Nemechek. The uh, Toyota onboard camera. 25th. Another of the cars that took the wave around. Just prior to the end of stage two.
So Kyle Larson leading Tyler Reddick by not quite two seconds, Jamie. And what a great day it's been for Tyler Reddick. 29th and 30th to start the year with those first two races. Today, all they wanted was to do our best, run in the top 10, get some points to show for it. They've been bad fast. They did have one bad stop. The third time they came in, he had to stop and back it up, but they overcame it. Now they're telling him, be aware, the 14 is fast and he's coming. Well, last lap, the 45 of Reddick was the only car on the track who was faster than Kyle Larson, and it was by more than a tenth of a second. So certainly Reddick has speed, but Larson has a one and a half second lead with 78 to go in the Nevada desert. Larson Chevy over the Toyotas of Reddick, Hamlin, and Truex. Let's go Fox side by side. This is Ford Truck Month with amazing offers across an amazing lineup of Ford trucks. Make way for the event that only comes around once a year. Featuring the new 2024 Ford F-150 and Ford Super Duty, the 2024 North American Truck of the Year. Get ready and get to Ford Truck Month. See your Ford dealer today for incredible offers on the new 2024 Ford F-150. Only during Ford Truck Month. When I was your age, we never had anything like this. What, Wi-Fi? Wi-Fi that works all over the house, even the basement. The basement? So I can finally throw that party and invite Shannon Barnes. Dreams do come true. Xfinity gives you reliable Wi-Fi with wall-to-wall -wall coverage on all your devices, even when everyone is online. Maybe we'll even get married one day. I wonder what I'll be doing. Probably still living here with mom and dad. Fast, reliable speeds right where you need them. That's wall-to-wall -wall Wi-Fi on the Xfinity 10G network. There's your biggie bag. All that food for five bucks, right. that's my go-to. Ooh, that's my ride or die. <laughs> Just like you and me, bag boys. Bag boys, what you gonna do? Don't, what you gonna do when we bring your food? It. Go biggie and get all this with the JBC for just five bucks. I love your dress. Oh, thanks. I splurged a little because Liberty Mutual customized my car insurance and I saved hundreds. That's great. I know, right? I've been telling everyone. Yeah, Ricky. <gasps> Did you hear that? So I just said her first word. <laughs> Can you say mama? Yeah, Ricky. <laughs> Can you say auntie? Yeah, Ricky. <laughs> How many people did you tell? Only pay for what you need. Liberty, Liberty, Liberty. Liberty. Welcome to the most anticipated event of the year. I am so excited. This is the greatest thing ever. What's happening? What a way to open up season 11. This is the make or break moment. The chance to carve your name into the history books. This is the NASCAR Xfinity Series. All right, boys, I must admit, you got it made right here. So much fun doing that tailgates piece. Uh, Tailgate Kings, we were in the infield, went down there and saw a lot of race fans, a lot of these West Coast fans. Kevin, these are your people. Yeah, apparently you wound up in a Bakersfield camp, huh? The, if you're gonna dub anybody the Tailgate Kings, them guys down there, they were having a blast. Loving what they see at this NASCAR race. You've definitely been around me enough to know that people from Bakersfield are fun, right? <laughs> 100%. You never know where they're gonna show up, too. Boy, the wind has picked up. Uh, speeds into turn one are now six mile per hour different compared to the beginning of the race. And that's quite a headwind headed off into turn one. Joy looking back at uh, Alex Bowman. Daniel Suarez behind them. They're back at 17th, 18th. William Byron 
had an incredibly fast car, maybe as fast as Kyle Larson's, but he picked up the biggest loose trash bag in Nevada on the grill, had to make an unplanned stop, and he's been fighting his way back ever since. He's now in 12th place. Where are we running? Well, these cars are really frustrating to drive when you get them in traffic like that. So that's good advice from um, Rudy up on the pit box and, and everything that's going on with this driver inside the car right now. It's it's just it's hard to work yourself back through traffic and he's just frustrated inside the car. I'm watching Tyler Reddick and his teammate that's down laps, Bubba Wallace, making a difference. Watch Bubba. He goes up. He had new tires on. He's going to get a run, and he's been pushing Reddick to the leader of Kyle Larson. See, here he comes. That's teamwork at its finest. It's going to push him right up front. They're running down the leader doing this. Now, Bubba, after that long pit stop where they had to cut off a lug nut, is 13 laps down. So uh, his top five string is over. But he's in position to help his teammate. Well, we've noted it in the past. We've seen Kyle Larson get loose on long runs. Last week's winner, Daniel Suarez, in 18th, trying to hold back Bowman and Barry. Larry Mack, 67 to go. Yeah, Mike, we went back racing with 95 to go. Everybody has to stop one time for fuel. Everybody has three sets of tires. Earlier when they pitted in stage two, they had only run 30 laps before they started making green flag stops. If you're going to split this into thirds, you're going to come the next four or five laps. If you're going to split this stage in half, you're going to have to run about another 15 laps. We're seeing a lot of people that I think are thinking about just splitting it in half. So Larry, which would you do? I believe I would split it in half, okay. especially because of just having three sets of tires. How about the five of Kyle Larson? He has been the class of the field all day. What's their plan? 15 to 20 away from pitting. The cycle could start at about 10. So that would split it in half. Bull sitter Joey Logano back in 13th. Uh, Chase Briscoe fading a bit. Now back to 14th. Yeah, we talked about Chase being up there in the top five and Obviously, he got a good restart and was able to get himself in a good position, but that car has continuously faded ever since uh, we took the green. Had good takeoff speed all weekend long. Yesterday was the same way. Not good on a long run. Jamie? I talked to Joey Lacuno about that this morning, and he said, you know, we unloaded. We were not happy. We were, we were worried. They made some adjustments, and that made him very confident for today. He said the car really handled well when they made adjustments to that 22, but guys, it has been bad news since he started on pole. He's gone backwards and he's plowing like a dump truck. His words, not mine. <laughs> Just in front of him, Noah Gregson is the second forward in the race in 12th, having a great race in his hometown. Best of the Fords is Blaney in fourth. Larson leading for Chevrolet. Reddick and Truex second and third for Toyota. And the first to pit is the number 14 of Chase Briscoe. As we mentioned, he was falling back, had been up as high as fifth. And as Larry said, will likely split this stage in thirds. That teammate being behind Reddick on those new tires, he's able to lag back, let him get a run, and then get a run up off the corner and push him down the straightaways. That combination's catching Larson. Well, the only thing that, that he's struggling with is we see Alex Bowman uh, come to make his green flag pit stop, but the only thing that they struggle with is going into turns one and two. I think he wants to run that middle lane and Reddick has to run a little higher. It seems like Reddick's handling's going away quickly too, but they're catching him quick. Now he's in the draft. He's in the draft. Larson, he's gonna pull right to him. So Bowman got four tires and pulls away. No other takers on pit road other than Briscoe and Bowman so far. Got too close there, Kevin. Drafted right to Larson, got in his wake, it got tight. Reddick got tight, shot up the racetrack. Here comes an assist to his teammate. Josh Berry on pit road. Yeah, I think if, if Kyle Larson is, is super concerned about what's happening with that high line in three and four with Reddick, I think he'll move up there and just 
air block him if he, if he gets if you feel like he, he gets too close. Sixth place here. This happening about eight seconds behind the leader. It's a good run for Austin Dillon. Harris, yes. Harrison Burton, Ryan Priest pitting all of these cars back toward the back half of the lead lap. I'm a little surprised about Denny Hamlin. I, I thought when he took the lead and was up in the front of the pack, I'm like, man, he's going to stay up here and, and be a part of this mix as, as we go through the rest of the day. But he's kind of just faded back to be six. But all right, first of the contenders to come to pit road is Ty Gibbs, who pits from seventh place. Jamie. He's made up a lot of ground after that disastrous pit stop last time by. He slid into his box and they tried to change four tires. One tire got away. And oh, by the way, he doesn't have first gear. So they'll try to nail it here and help push him on the exit of his pit box. Daniel Hemrick also stopping uh, for four tires and fuel. And Gibbs pulls away without incident. You heard him have to lose a lot of clutch. Yeah, you got to use there. a lot of clutch and a lot of RPM to get that wheel spin up so you can get it out of the pit box in second gear. All right, a lot of takers now. Joey Logano, Austin Dillon, Regan. What a great run for the three of Austin Dillon. Earlier on in the day, very tight with the right front. Couldn't get through the corners quite like he wanted, but they've adjusted on it. As of right now, he's been quiet on the radio this run. Happy right now. Eric Jones, Kaz Grala on pit road. Redick in second, pit yep. road. And Wallace is continues to be his wingman. He's going to pit as well. And here comes Blaney to the pit lane. Jamie. Tyler Reddick parks it perfectly in his pit box. Said he got a little bit tight there, especially in traffic. A little bit of an air pressure adjustment. And four tires here, Regan. The 11 of Denny Hamlin. One and two is pretty good for his car, but three and four is the three and four is the problem. He has been plowing in turns three and four. Jamie. S Cindric is in Stenhouse, and here comes the leader, Kyle Larson. Well, the day he's been having, Mike, <laughs> it's no surprise he hasn't said a thing on the radio since he last came into pit. Car has been very good. All they've made is an air pressure adjustment on this five machine today. He's led 136 laps as he parks it there. Four tires so have clear vision. They got that tear off off. They catch the tire and work the left side. I'll give the lead to Carson Hosevar. <laughs> What a day he's had. William Byron uh, headed pit side now. So Byron, the leader, Josevar, if he stays out, will be the leader. But no, he is coming to pit road as well. And that should pretty well complete the pit cycle. Yeah, and Tyler Reddick lost a bunch of ground on this pit stop as we watched Carson Josevar come in, into his pit stall. But Reddick lost a bunch of ground with a slow pit stop. Byron had to back up to get in his stall. <laughs> and Kyle Busch. Will have a penalty. Oh no. This is what we've talked about all day, guys. We we can't make the little mistakes. And we see these pit roads, speeding penalties, uh, loose, loose wheels, uncontrolled tires, whatever the penalty is, we've seen a lot of it. And now we're running out of time to right. fix the mess, right? Now Austin Cindric has been against the wall. Uh, the Kyle Bush penalty is for pitting out of the box. Pass through pit road speed will cost him about a lap and a quarter to the leader, who is now Daniel Suarez. Five cars have not pitted. Suarez, Gilliland, McDowell, Kraus, and Haley. None of whom were running up in the top ten, but they cycle to the front, hoping for a caution, or they're going to stay on that one-stop strategy that Larry described. Well, Kevin, you noted Reddick was a slow stop, 13-5 it was. He short-pitted Larson, going for the advantage that we talked about strategy-wise, but couldn't take advantage of it because of the slow stop. Justin Haley to pit road as we continue under green with 53 laps to go. And now just four drivers at the front of the field who have not been on pit road since the end of stage two. Uh, here's Gilliland pitting and that will leave just Suarez McDowell and Kraus. So Larry how long do they need to go uh, to do the one stop strategy Larry when will they stop. Yeah, if they're going to split straight down the middle here in about three to five laps, somewhere around lap 219, lap right 220, now. looks like Suarez is coming now. <laughs> now would be a good answer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Larry. Yeah, you were all over that, Larry. That was spot on. 
So McDowell would be the race leader. And Derek Krause getting his first of six starts this year in the 16 for college racing. Running second. Obviously, Michael McDowell, who's cycled around to, to lead in the race, uh, they've had a tough day. They've missed the handling today and after a great start in the first two races. And this is another one that we're on board with the Ford Performance Camera here with Brad Keselowski. He's not had a good day either, so they, they've missed it today, and we noticed that yesterday in practice. Well, when you're down and out, what do you do? Time to gamble, and I like this. Let's do something different, hope for a caution here. Maybe it'll pay out for us. McDowell. So Kyle Larson currently third, first of the cars that pitted uh, as we cycle back around, but the pit stop cycle not quite complete. 34 and the 16 have yet to stop. Here is Kraus making his Cup Series debut. Yeah, and right now the, the leader, Michael McDowell and uh, Derek Kraus, they're losing a second and a half uh, to Kyle Larson. So that's a lot of time to give up per lap. Which means if they stay out, in five laps, Larson will be the leader whether they stop or not. That's right. So, Larry, you're saying they could split it in half by stopping now, but does Michael McDowell need to stop? Yeah, he can run another 12 to 14 laps on his fuel. That would be beyond splitting it in half. Looks like to me he decided to come to pit road right now. It absolutely splits his stage straight down the middle. See how that plays out for him at the end of the day. See just how slick those pit boxes are right there first hand, Kevin. You told us about it. Yeah, and for whatever reason, I don't know if it's the concrete or the rubber on the concrete, but these pit boxes has, have always been as slick as anywhere that we go on the circuit, and it's really easy to slide through your pit box with the front tires locked up. So Derek Krause running in his first ever cup race is going to get to lead his first ever cup race. That's cool. He better hurry because he comes. <laughs> got <Kyle one>. one. <laughs> we got one. That just shows you the difference in tires right there. So Kyle Larson back on point. Tyler Reddick, how, how long before either of you laid your first cup race? I'm not sure. I don't know. I know. I didn't. <laughs> My first race was at Rockingham, and I know how well I ran at Rockingham, so I know it wasn't there. Well, we know you led your third cup race. That's you right. won it. That's exactly us, right. So. More importantly, that's the one that gets me yep. third race. But you know what, though? My first race I ever raced was the first win. My win came at New Hampshire. That's what was unique to me. So Derek Krauss has made his pit stop. And now the entire field uh, has been in. So 44 laps to go in Las Vegas. We'll take our last scheduled green flag break before the finish. Tacoma, Toyota, let's go places. The three for me only at Chili's serves up more deliciousness for just $10.99 than you'll find anywhere else. I mean, have y'all seen those fast food prices lately? It's like even they want you to come to Chili's. This Chili's three for me is the best $10.99 you can eat. Super Tuesday on Fox News Channel. Covering every state, every primary, every result with insight and analysis you won't get anywhere else. Super Tuesday on Fox News Channel. America is watching. You can't stop me now. 
brace for impact as the baddest superstars on the planet are unleashed in prime time. Listen to this place. All new Friday Night Smackdown at 8, 7 central on Fox. I, I was standing. You were there. See, Home Quote Explorer lets you easily compare home insurance options so you can get what you need without overpaying. Yeah, we've spent a lot on this kitchen. Oh, yeah, really high-end stuff. Sorry, that's our ghost. Yeah, okay. It's more annoying than anything. Too bad there's mold behind the backsplash. <laughs> yep, there's mold. Well, then, let's see if we can save you some money with Progressive. Guess how much I originally paid for this fireplace? 23 bucks. Materials and labor. Just ignore him. You got bamboozled. Did you see that? Hear that? Feel that? Let's all take a deep breath. Because once we peel out, there's no looking back. You ready? everybody over at Nellis Air Force Base right across the highway from Las Vegas Motor Speedway for the flyover and good all flyover. they do. That was a cool flyover. Big flex. Glad they're on our side. Yes. <laughs> Teammates battling for eighth place. Chase Elliott, Alex Bowman. That was one of our stories at the top of the day. What, how would Chase Elliott fare uh, here at Las Vegas? We remember this was the first race he missed after that snowboarding accident uh, last year. Well, we haven't seen the speed out of the 9 and the 48 like we've seen out of the 5 and the 24 today. And, um, and de I definitely think that they're going to go back and try to figure out why that is. And you look behind him at Alex Bowman. Uh, it's been two years since since he won a race right here at Las Vegas Motor Speedway was the last time he had won. So both the nine and the 48 uh, looking for some speed compared to their teammates. Now let's clean up uh, the issue of Kyle Busch in his hometown race. Uh, he was in the top five much of the day but here is what has put him a lap down. The splitter is over the line at the front end of his pit box. They went ahead and serviced the car and that results in a penalty. And they've had four pretty big penalties on pit road this year so they have the speed in their race cars they've just had some mistakes on pit road and, and at this level of racing you just cannot have the mistakes. That was bad judgment. They, I mean they saw it right probably should have backed him up before we did service on that car. It's a price Whoa. you know it's a hard call to make. That's a call you have to make. Third place here is Ty Gibbs. He is battling back toward the front, and uh, that's a hornet's nest inside that car. So they're nice heat. All right, okay. I am done. We're into them. Easy. That's it. Go back to work here. <laughs> yeah, it's it's tough it's inside the car, and Ty's had a you know pretty challenging day with everything that he's been battling through, and. It sounds like he feels like his teammates should cut him a break right there and, and know how fast his car is. And there you see Whoa. him. Whoa. Crossing back over. Now oh, yeah. you're going to be frustrated. Yeah. Now it's warranted. I, I agree with you, Ty Gibbs. And that brings their other teammate, Denny Hamlin, right back into play. There he's going to get in line. And you can almost see the personality in the cars, the way that Martin swerved back up the racetrack. <laughs> hey, like, I'm, you might be mad. I don't like the way you Trouble turn racing. two. One car sliding, slamming into the wall. Oh, no. Corey LaJoy. Was that right rear down maybe from sliding? I think the right rear was down right there. It, yeah. LaJoy was 18th. Yep. What a bummer, Clint. Corey was having such a good day. Ran solid in the front all day. And looks like the right rear might have been down. 
I think. No, I think it, may, it wasn't down. He got. Yeah. If he, I can't. Let's back up. Make sure he didn't get help. That car was right on his tail. But he got loose. I, it obviously when he locked down. Oh, blew gosh. the tire out. I can't tell you guys at home how hard that apron hit is. Listen to this. Hit the apron. Oh, that that last shot goes right through your spine. I know it doesn't look like much on TV, but when you watch this right here, you're going to you're going to feel it. I think that was Brad Keselowski that was really close yeah. to him. I want to go back and make sure that yeah, somebody was crowding help. him right there. He just it looked like he just he, lost it Yeah, because you heard the right rear tire pop. As he's sliding with the brakes on, you'll hear the right rear, you heard the right rear tire pop inside the in-car camera. Yeah, but I don't think he got help. I don't no. think Brad, I think he just got loose. Yep. He was pretty close to him, but unfortunately. Those little hits like that hurt. And you see the safer barrier move right there, and the in-car cameras don't really do it justice, you know, how that, that feeling feels for the driver. I want to thank all of our Fox cameramen. Yesterday, they were a bunch of grim faces when they were not allowed up on the roof to run the cameras uh, during practice for the high winds. It was like, oh, gosh, now what do we do? But, man, they give you these great pictures. Right along Keselowski. Yeah, totally just got loose in front of him. You knew he was in trouble. Did you see how fast he caught him right there? Got loose, got out of the gas, lost it. And there are fellows back up on duty. Uh, Mike Drainus, Nelson Hastings, Steve up there as well. This, they're giving you those, those great pictures. And yes, they are tethered to the guardrail up there on the roof. I need I one of those. Them. I need one of those for Clint <laughs> in here. So Larry Mack, you got one set of tires up on the wall and you got 31 laps to go. What do you do? This is one of the reasons I'm follically challenged as I <laughs> right here because they've run about 20 laps on these tires. We're going to go back racing about 25 to 26 or 7 to go. I just think that's too many laps that you've run, too many laps to go to gamble too much. But you know what? We are in Vegas, but gambling here could be like hitting on 19. Might not work out too good. My Ooh. moral of my story is pit and get four tires. Was, you look I'm, confused, Clint. I was, well, I was wondering what the 19 meant. Who hits on 19? Gosh. Well, that's what I'm saying. That would be gambling yeah. and staying out or taking just two here. Okay. <laughs> here Clint's still confused. Yep. <laughs> All right, 31, excuse me, 23 lead lap cars. Pit road's going to be real busy right here, Regan. That's right, Mike. They're all going to be coming here. The 11 car of Denny Hamlin fired off good on that run. Just wants a good pit stop. No adjustments because of it. And the 12 of the 12 of Ryan Blaney, just no grip right now with his car loose overall. And the ride quality wasn't good. Jamie? By the Reddick in the 45, a little bit tight. He said the top of the racetrack is pretty good. I can make it work. Meanwhile, the five of Kyle Larson, happy with that balance, told him where he was faster than the 45 in three and four. Ross Chastain, two tires, goes up to second place as we are under caution for Corey LaJoy. Welcome back to the Pennzoil 400 presented by Jiffy Lube at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. 29 laps to go as 10 cars take the wave around trying to get a lap back will equalize things somewhat. We're showing 29 cars on the lead lap at the moment from our aerial coverage provided by Goodyear powering the race from green flag to checkered flag and every mile in between. Goodyear more driven.
So we're hearing quite a few of the contenders have one set of sticker tires left. As we're going to restart with 27 laps to go, Larson and Chastain on the front row. Ross Chastain, the only driver uh, that we noticed taking just two tires. Everybody else got four. Well, this is going to get wild, Clint. Yes, sir. They all know that the pay window is getting ready to open. We're going to have 27 laps to go when we take the green flag, and they are going to push and shove, and there's not going to be a lot of give. Yes, this restart's going to get wild. Now, with the wave around, everybody back to Kyle Busch in 30th place uh, is on the lead lap, and then add uh, the free pass car, Daniel Hemry. Man. I cannot believe I just heard you say Kyle Busch 30th place. What a hit there. Bad time on that. Hard to dig yourself out this late in the run. That's a top three car in my opinion. Running 30th. But well, you got to do all the little things right. And no matter how fast your car is, Clint, you got to do all the little things right in order to win these races. Kyle Busch held two fingers out the window and then three fingers. Not sure what he was signaling to Christopher Bell behind him. Well, let's find out how this is going to end. Kyle Larson, Ross Chastain, Reddick and Blaney in row two, Hamlin Logano, Elliott Truex, green flag. Looking to the inside. Reddick was going for it. Blocked by Larson. Now he's moving up. Three wide, two rows deep, right behind the leaders. Big run coming. Wow, three Toyotas on the bottom. Bush comes to shove. Chastain on the outside, holding tough off of four for the lead. Well, and that's what everybody else wants to see. They want to see Ross Chastain hold that five car up because they know that if he gets too far away, it'll be tough to catch him in this shorter run. Chastain bottom to top as they enter turn one. Comes Danny Hamlin looking in that middle. Still a lot of three wide. And we know that Ross Chastain isn't going to go down without a fight. We've seen it every week. We've seen him do whatever he has to do in order to put himself in position to have a chance to win. So Kyle Larson clears him. Now these other guys need to get going. They were four wide for about 12th coming off turn four. <laughs> Still battling all the way through the field. Reddick Hamlin side by side for third trying to gain on Chastain. And they are, they have closed it up to second place. Noah Gregson restarted 13th. He's up to sixth and charging. See Denny get tight and awake to Chastain on that outside. Here comes Reddick on the bottom. There you go, Clint. You see Noah Gregson on the outside of Martin Truex Jr. there. He's had a great few laps here in order to put himself in position. That car has great takeoff speed. All weekend long, all the Stuart Haas cars were fast. Teammate as well. You see Gibbs bouncing back from his uh, pit stop. He was slow in the pits because he doesn't have a first gear. Hard to get that car out of the box. Lost some spots. Blaney to the inside on Hamlin. That'll be fourth place. Well, and here we go with Blaney again. Yeah. You know, I mean, he just, he, they figure it out. They put themselves in position. They work on their car all day and show up at the, at the end of these races and give themselves a chance to win. You know what they call those? Champions. Four different leaders, three different lines through turns three and four. There's two tires on Chastain. He's still making it work. He's heard him get tight yeah, right got there. Tied off the two on the exit had to lift. Larry, we're coming to 20 laps to go. 
If I look at the last four Las Vegas races, all with the Gen 7 car, the average of the last caution, that 249, 18 to go, and the last two spring races has ended in overtime. We're right now 20 to go. So overtime, a distinct possibility. Well, yes, I like what Larry's saying there as a fan, but if I am Ty Gibbs, I do not want to caution. I need this green flag run. I know I don't have first gear in the pits. That's going to be a hindrance if I have to pit. I need to be out here and make up the difference on this racetrack. That's my only way to get a good finish. Currently sixth. Suarez <laughs> going all the way downstairs on Austin Dillon and Chase Elliott. That'll be for 10. Kyle Larson, one second up on Tyler Reddick. That's what we've seen most of the day. We've seen Kyle Larson kind of stretch that that lead out in the first parts of these uh, runs. And as the run will go on, Tyler Reddick starts to get a little bit closer, even out and even surpass him on speed. Jamie. Chastain guys remember they had that penalty before the race today he had to start in the back and I talked to Phil Surgeon his crew chief he said we're not worried about it this style of track is our bread and butter at track house that combined with Ross Chastain at this track he got his first career Xfinity Series win here he said we're going to be good today they had to take a gamble to get this track position but if they can finish in the top 10 that's a win well that gamble includes the 23 laps he has on those left side tires so far Brad Keselowski sniffing around the top 10 and the first half of the race you would not have called that uh, this is Brad's best running position today he was up in 12th for a little bit here restarted 16th trying to battle Austin Dillon and uh, William Byron there for a finish in the top dozen granted a doubt top yep. 10 would go a long ways with this race team especially with his teammate Chris Buescher being the only car out of the race today. I know Gregson great run and he's he's not done going no. forward yet that time's he's, right he's better than the one those guys on the 10 car have done a great job adjusting their car today and you know, look look back um, to the start of this race and, and I, I think about how he didn't qualify and everything that that happened there with the speed they, they did nothing but go forward today and this is exactly what they need a good solid run as we see Blaney go to the outside of Ross Chastain. Well this is Gregson's hometown race Clint when you raced in Kansas or Kevin you in California was a little extra pressure maybe a little extra incentive because of the people you knew were there had followed you your whole career. Yes and yes I always wanted to run well always fun to see you know fans right people that watched you race every Friday night down the road at Lakeside Speedway you run into that guy I remember vividly seeing those guys that were there when you started and was certainly there with the end always fun to come back home nothing feels better. Chastain may be about to get swallowed up here remember he has those older left side tires against the cars he's racing with. Guess nobody told Ross. Yeah, well, these, <laughs> these guys racing side by side has just kind of bunched them up uh, behind them and allowed a how couple about, of those cars to, to creep up on them. How about Tyler Reddick, he's moving around trying to figure this thing out. Is he going to run him down? He is closing the gap, folks. It was a tenth faster that last lap. See if he makes this outside line work. He rim rode up down here in three and four last time. There it is. Well, we saw this the last run, Clint. We saw. Like we said, Kyle Larson took off, and then Tyler Reddick gets up against the fence and starts to drive uh, drive up towards Kyle Larson. But it seems like when he gets in the inside those four or five car length distance, it's like he can't get any closer. Well, is that him catching him, or is that Larson just managing the situation in that's, the gap? Yeah, and, and a little bit of both, probably. I, I think that's probably a little bit of both. It seems like it seems like Kyle. Once he gets close enough, Kyle it kind of takes back off and does what he needs to do. There's Larson answering the call. Yes. Moved up, changed his line, but look at the gap. Reddick really closed on that bottom. Gap gone. Yes, Reddick sir. was a tenth and a half faster the last lap, and on this lap, a lot faster. He is two and a quarter of a second faster. Got a race, boys. Well, now it's a cat and mouse game, and you see Kyle Larson go down to the bottom of the racetrack, and that's not what uh, Reddick wanted to see because he gets aero tight. 
And now it's a cat and mouse game. All right, you're going to run high, I'm going to run high. You're going to run low, I'm going to run low. So, well, remember, both stages today ended with Reddick trying to pass Larson for the lead. Just the position we're in right now as we come to 10 to go. Got back away from him. Just like you said, cat and mouse game. Larson moved around, took his air away from him down there, one and two, created a gap. Now he's fastest. And watch this entry into three. Kyle Larson has this big, lazy arc going into three, trying to stay in front of that 45 car of Tyler Reddick as long as he can so that the front end doesn't turn well. That's exactly what you were talking about, the arc. Look at it getting into the corner. Look at the run. Now. One lap car ahead of J.J. I was looking to see if that was his teammate, Bubba Wallace, to see if he was going to help him again. Nope. J.J. Yaley. Man, Larson's doing a good job managing the line, taking the air off of him. That untimely caught him on the exit of the corner. That hurt Tyler Reddick. Once you, you said it, Kevin. Once you get into that gap, right, and you get into the bubble, it's hard to get the job done. But the thing I will, will say is, Tyler Reddick, as this run goes, the, that top in three and four, he's going to get a little braver and a little braver because he knows he's running out of laps. And if he starts to scuff the wall or has something happen, that's okay at this point. Tyler Reddick's hungry. He's an aggressive race car driver. He's going to put it on the line. Eight to go. Ryan Blaney finally got past Chastain for third place. Ty Gibbs fifth, Noah Gregson sixth. Things starting to sort out here. Hamlin and Truex fighting for seventh right here. Otherwise, the top ten pretty stable. Although, fifth place beginning to close up. This is for seventh. Half a second is the gap. Oh, my goodness. That's a great shot. That's on the fence and right there. That is commitment is he what is, that is. He is one of the best at doing that. He and the guy that he's chasing, Kyle Larson, are one of the best at running up next to the wall. And Kyle Larson just lost another tenth to Tyler Reddick. And I think a lot of that has to do with the lap car that is in front of Kyle Larson. It's forced him to change his line. And for the, about the last lap and a half, he's had to deal with that. Who's that lapper? Look at the lapper. It's Bubba Wallace, guys. That's Reddick's teammate. Will he give Kyle Larson fits? He's going to let him go. Probably the right thing to do. Now let's see if he can help Reddick like he was earlier. Maybe he can push him. And maybe that's why Bubba Wallace backed off to get in the position he was in before, trying to get Reddick back to Kyle Larson. Well, it would be dirty if you went up and got in the way of Larson in right. front. It would be. But if he could go in the behind him and push him down the straightaways the way he was earlier, hey, that's a teammate. Can't catch him. No. no. It's going to be in Reddick's hands. He's going to have to figure this out. He's doing everything he could do. He is on the fence, full commit. And that's where he's going to have to make up the time is in three and four because really in one and two, he's not making up much time. He's going to have to figure something out on the on the big end down here in three and four. Larson's your winner that lap for sure. 92 to a 99. Yeah, and where Larson is running in the in the middle of the racetrack just doesn't allow Reddick to be able to make up the distance that he needs to to three, one and two. He did a good job that lap of just maintaining the gap and Here's where he needs to gain in three and four. He caught him big time off the of two. Big run down the back stretch. See if he can carry some more momentum. Got a little bit tight on the exit. He's close, folks. Reddick gained a little in one and two last time by maybe half a car length. Yes. Three to go. 76 to a 94. Look at him moving out. Moving around, Larson moving up, taking that air off of him. He's catching him. He's there. Yeah, and Tyler Reddick has figured out a little bit through one and two where, where he's running up the racetrack about three quarters of the way. He's blocking. He's going to move up. Reddick is committed to that fence. Can he get to his outside? Gets a little bit tight here. The race is on. Two laps to go. Big time took his line yeah. there. He tried up the racetrack. He, he tried to surprise Kyle Larson right there by going low, and, and Larson saw that in the mirror and was able to pull that car down the racetrack. But Tyler Reddick didn't lose a lot of time right there, so no, he, he still didn't. didn't lose the race. Blaney, a distant oh. third, but uncontested. This one's going to hurt him. Yeah. Here they come. Off turn number four. Twice Larson and Reddick have finished 1 2. Larson, the winner both times. One lap to go, sponsored by Credit One Bank. 
And that was all Kyle Larson putting his car in the right spot in front of Tyler Reddick. Tyler Reddick went to the bottom of the racetrack and he lost all that momentum. This whole race has been all Kyle Larson. You put that kid behind the wheel of a race car like this at Hendrick Motorsports and he will get the job done. Old fashioned butt whooping all day long. Kyle Larson. Two of the best in the business come off turn number four. Reddick got within a car length, but Kyle Larson scores his 24th career win for Rick Hendrick and Chevrolet. How about Ty Gibbs coming back up and getting a top five after the day he's had? Chastain, that gamble paid off fourth place, and Blaney, third champion, grounded out. Noah Gregson, sixth, great run. Truex ahead of Hamlin for seventh. Pole sitter Joey Logano and William Byron, the top ten. That was a rough top ten for William Byron. He was all over the place on his racetrack today. Pretty much every position at one time. Big win for Kyle Larson. You do not want to give this team confidence this early in the game. Great, great job, five team. Larson, you drove a heck of a race, man. Proud of you. Proud of all you guys. Tyler, great job. Thanks for back this job. Great job all around. The last five times that Kyle Larson has swept both stages, he also won the race, including today. Taking care of business. Seventh career win on a mile and a half track for Larson. Hendrick Motorsports now two out of three for this young season. Byron at Daytona, Larson in Las Vegas. I'm fixing to see about a half mile long burnout. And Chevrolet continues its string of victories. Three for three in 2024. They've had quite the season to start with in all three divisions here in NASCAR. Tyler Reddick got within a car length with two to go, but could get no closer. How about that burnout for the fans all the way down. Whole front straightaway. Kid's getting good at him, isn't he? <laughs> He's having plenty of practice. That's right. Good day for Reddick. Can't hang your head on that. That's a heck of an effort by that race team, that race car driver. That's hard to do up against that fence like that. Well, he gave it his all. He's going to go back and watch this a little bit and probably analyze that. I think going to the bottom of those last couple laps, I feel like Kyle Larson was going to go wherever he was by driving in the mirror, but I feel like through three and four, his the top three. line, yeah, yeah I, I feel like that was going to be the place that he needed to be because it didn't seem like Kyle wanted to go all the way up next to the fence because he didn't, when he did block it before, he didn't go all the way up there, so. I think he just mid -read, misread Kyle. Yeah. I think he thought he was going to go high and it's right the last minute he went to low and Unfortunately, didn't work out, but man, what an effort by Tyler Reddick. And the three manufacturers each put a car in the top three and the next three. Chevy, Toyota, Ford, Larson, Reddick, Blaney. Then Chastain, Gibbs, Gregson, Chevy, Toyota, Ford. So parody? Yes. Kyle Larson came in here as a pretty overwhelming favorite and did not disappoint. Probably going to win four or five dirt races this week, too, somewhere. <laughs> here comes Owen, his son. <laughs> Good job, Dad. How about that? <laughs> I love it. That's awesome. That's great. Jamie, oh, yeah. Get him on your feet, Owen. What a great family sport. It absolutely is. Kyle Larson gets his third win at Las Vegas, and what a dominant performance. He sends Owen up to get the flag for him. What a day for you. I, I mean, you guys just had a smooth race start to finish. But take me through the last 10 laps, and you're looking in the rear view with Tyler Reddick as he's closing on you. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I knew Tyler was going to be the guy to beat um, from the first stage. You know, he was he was really fast there, and I was hoping those guys were going to get racing a little bit longer behind me because I felt like it was going to time out to where, you know, he was running really hard and getting the toe to, to catch me at the end. And um, thankfully, I was able to air block him a couple laps and uh, get him tight. And um, I thought him and Bubba were going to get you know, working together again to build a run, but uh, so I was, I was happy that didn't happen. Um, but all in all, such a great, great job by this Hendrick Cars uh, Chevy team and um, just their execution, pit road, restarts, all that uh, was great. So 
cool to get a win here at Vegas again. Um, back to back, swept all the stages again, so can't ask for much more. Congratulations, Kyle Larson wins big at Las Vegas. Now he'll celebrate with his kiddos. No, you can't ask for much more than that, guys. No, you can't. And that celebration right there is the best. Regan? Well, Tyler Ruddick, the other side of the uh, battle for the win there. You had it up against the wall. Looked like you had forward momentum going at the end of the race there, and then it comes up just a little bit short. How frustrating is that? Yeah, it's just uh, the name of the next gen racing game, right? Um, you get the lead, you got to hold on to it. And uh, yeah, Kyle did a really good job there of pretty much taking away every option I had to uh, close the gap. So. Yeah, he was, uh, you know, I, he, he seemed pretty good in the middle, and, and I was obviously really good on the bottom, and uh, he just never let me have it right. So I kept trying to run higher and higher, and, you know, he was kind of running right in the middle of the racetrack there. It was kind of pretty pretty uh, efficient to block both lanes. So every time I kind of got close, um, you know, I mean, we're running just wide enough, uh, wide open enough in turn uh, one and two that, you know, he could kind of defend pretty well. So it's frustrating. Um, I feel like we were never up front really all day long until it got to the stage end. So, yeah, we had a really good uh, nasty beast toy to Camry and, um, you know, just stupid mistakes on pit road. You know, same shit, different year, right? Like, it's kind of frustrating. So we'll continue to work on it, but um, a good rebound for our team today. Thanks, Tyler. Oh, that kid's a future champion right there. Certainly frustrated. Yep. Gave it his all. And maybe one of these kids, too, as they celebrate with Dad. Kyle Larson, the winner in Las Vegas after sweeping both stages. He fights off Tyler Reddick for the win. There are a lot of traditions in NASCAR. This is quickly becoming one of my favorite. The kids, Owen and Audrey, taking a ride with Daddy Kyle Larson, who won today out in Las Vegas, his 24th career win, third at Las Vegas, leading 181 laps. But that doesn't tell the whole story because he swept all three stages the fifth time he's done it in his career. Hi, this I'm Shannon, Larry, and Jamie. Uh, we knew that Kyle Larson was going to be a favorite going into today's race. He backed that up and more. I always like to pick out the turning point of the race. I think the turning point of the race is when they loaded that five car in the hauler in Concord, <laughs> North Carolina about Tuesday and sent it out west. I mean, just domination. We saw it in practice. But how about those two California dirt racers going at each other there in the closing laps? Yeah, I mean, the, Kyle Larson didn't have the best car at the end of the race. He made the right decisions. And it's hard when you're in Reddick's position because you have to go to the opposite end of the racetrack that Kyle goes. Kyle, I don't want to say outsmarted him, but but was able to put his car in front of him at the right point, and you saw coming to the white flag. When he ran the bottom of three and four, that's when the yeah. race was over. We heard from the top two finishers, of course, Tyler Reddick and Kyle Larson. Let's hear from the third-place guy. That would be Ryan Blaney, the champion. He is standing by with Regan Smith. Well, a solid day for Ryan Blaney coming home in third place. Ryan, seemed like you guys really optimized the day. It was a back and forth a little bit on the handling at the end, though, a good day. Yes. Um, you know, worked really hard all day and uh, got better through the race, I thought. So that was... I was positive and, and probably ended like the best we were. Uh, so that's that's always good and uh, something good to look forward to and hopefully just continue to work on. So proud of the Menards Penzo Ford Mustang team. 12 guys did a good job all weekend. And um, so yeah, hopefully we learned uh, for, for next week another mile and a half. So that's all you can ask for. Thanks Ryan. Yeah, number 303 win for Hendrick Motorsports. Chevy has now won all three races this season. There's your McNugget for Race Hub this week. Love McNugget. We'll be right back to wrap things up. Yes, Kyle Larson celebrates in victory lane. Some other guys celebrating today. Ross Chastain finished fourth. Uh, Noah Gregson finished sixth. Let's catch up with the fifth place finisher. That would be Ty Gibbs. He's standing by with Jamie Little. I think the award for most events to happen in one race goes to Ty Gibbs. You had that pit stop that set you back. What was it like after that? You just seemed to just mow down the field and get to the front. Yeah, I, I kind of suck us in the hole there. Um, and then we broke the transmission. It's kind of unfortunate that that has to happen. I'm, I'm sure if we still built them that we wouldn't have that issue at all, but that's just part of it. And, and we had to fight back. So I put my team in the hole there and no excuses and, and just kind of fought back. And um, my team gave me a really great he gets us Camry XSC this weekend, um, and, and we drove back to the front. So uh, just need a little bit more to get to the lead so we can go, go, go get a win, but really happy with my team. Great job. Thank you.
I mentioned Noah Gregson, just want to give him an attaboy, sixth yeah. place finish. He had that deficit coming in with the points, and what a great day. Yeah, great day for both Noah and Ty Gibbs. They had quite a battle, and Ty Gibbs had a lot happen throughout the day, but was able to persevere and get a solid run. Seems like he's a little down there, but he uh, on the right track, guys. Yeah, his toughest battle probably came with his teammate, Martin Trex Jr. He was not <laughs> happy with Martin there near the closing laps of that race. Always fun hanging out with you guys on Sunday. Remember, you can catch Race Hub weeknights at 6. Next week, we're headed to Phoenix. Tune in on Sunday. Coming up next on Fox, you can catch Family Guy. Did you see that? Hear that? Feel that? Is this how you prove you earn the crown? Is in his DNA. How you shut up the haters? I love it. Handle the heat? Who's going to make the move? Be a must win. Is this a shooting star? Rock star? Superstar? Okay, okay. Let's all take a deep breath, because once we peel out, there's no looking back. You ready?